a brief introduction of a very illustrious career of uh, Satish Mehta sir. Satish Mehta sir is Indian Foreign Office, uh, uh, Foreign Service Officer, 1983 batch. He has served uh, as Director General of Indian Council for Cultural Relations. He has been an advisor to the UN Head of Mission in Haiti during UN peacekeeping operations. He served as a director to prime keeping of operations in 1995-96. He has served as a director to Prime Minister Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Shri I.K. Gujral in Prime Minister's office. And he, ha he has been instrumental in dealing with the strategic sectors like external affairs, defense, atomic energy, space, information broadcasting, and science and technology. He has represented India in many international conferences, uh, including disarmament. He was on the UN Secretary General's group of expert in conventional arms register and was member of Stockholm process of Bonn Berlin process on targeted UN sanctions. He has served as the Joint Secretary North and uh, superannuated as ambassador to Kuwait. So we are very fortunate to have Sir here. And every year we have this international relations lecture and heartily sir guide all the students here so without taking much time sir i request you to start your lecture uh, shall i start sharing the screen sir uh, but before that first of all thank you very much uh, uh, uh both to you and to sankal for what uh, it has been doing uh, but first of all, I'd like all of you to put your videos on so I can see you uh, uh, visually and not just your names on the screen. Because, you know, as much as you'd like to talk to a human being, I'd like to talk to a person I can see and I can look in the eyes. Uh, so uh, it's a, this is my personal request. Please put your videos on uh, so that I can see all of you. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. The rest of you, uh, what we'll do is... Uh, uh, and I just let me, but first of all, uh, as, as all of you put your videos on, uh, my best wishes to all of you uh, for uh, success at the at this stage. And uh, I'm sure you'll be as successful when you give your interviews also. Uh, this is a tough exam. Uh, so uh, there's always a little bit of anxiety, but then don't worry about it. It's only human beings who pass it, you know, so. Uh, and they all like you and me, so uh, don't worry about it. Um, all of you work very hard, and I'm sure uh, you deserve the success uh, which will come your way. Uh, what uh, I'll do is, uh, I have some slides for you, uh, which I'll uh, put on. Please, quickly put your uh, uh, the videos on, please. Uh, yep. Who else? Himanshu? Preksha? What is per? Who else is left? Yogesh, Archita, Archita yeah. is here. Yes, sir, everybody is here. Good. Yeah, Dimanshu is still missing. Satyajit is missing. Yep, very good, Satyajit. Dimanshu, quickly, please. You're the last one. I'm sure you want to come first, not last, you know. Okay, good. So uh, now we are interacting like human beings. Sadly, it's only online and not uh, offline, but uh, this serves the purpose. So, uh, Sahil, what about you? Uh, okay, so what uh, uh, what we'll do is, uh, I'll show a few slides. Uh, basically, the whole presentation is through a PPT, through a PPT. And what we will do is, uh, I will show a few slides. Uh, and then I'll open the, the floor for questions because you know you can't keep questions at the end of an hour, hour and a half lecture. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's really not communicating well. So I'll do a few slides. I'll ask you for questions. Please ask questions only pertaining to the slides that you see. Don't ask for questions on when you're talking, uh, say the US, don't talk of questions of China or US. Just show patience. It will all happen. And uh, I'll try and answer all the questions as well as I can. Uh, secondly, you see the whole purpose of this exercise that uh, we are undergoing um, with the with the Sankal uh, is to make you understand uh, the reasons uh, behind the foreign policy and uh, how we deal with it. 
facts you can read anywhere you and i'm sure you would do as you go along maybe this is something that you must do uh, that's important so focus on uh, asking fundamental basic questions the why's the hows not what the what is very easy to find out i'll tell you but even if i can't something you can always dig it out uh, google g is very happy to help you on that so just an important thing is to understand the underpinning of foreign policy uh, and our actions and why we take the actions that we take that's important and once you understand that then trust me it's very easy to answer any question it's like anything you know if you understand the basics well whether it's physics chemistry or anything else uh, you'll be able to answer questions you'll be able to respond well so that's where we are uh, uh, sukriti so could you please put the slide on now Uh, one more question uh, do you want me to speak in english do you want me to speak in english and hindi uh, or uh, so i leave it to you is it okay if i speak in hindi uh, english and then mix it with english or uh, i speak in english and mix it with hindi or are you comfortable in english okay uh, since you not responded i guess i'll continue in english and where required i'll speak in hindi also and if you don't understand something please let me know and i'll explain it uh, okay thanks so isko can you increase on the uh, screen please it might be easier for people to read okay so uh, see it's, it's important for uh, and that's the basic as i said it's important to understand the basis of uh, what are the principles of a foreign policy and what is the purpose of foreign policy so principles of india's foreign policy very briefly a belief in friendly relations with all countries in the world the resolution of conflict conflicts by peaceful means the sovereign equality of all states independence of thought and action and equity in the conduct of international relations and uh, i can honestly say that we have by and large stuck to it uh so uh, in that sense we have been uh, uh, very uh, very fair and uh, also uh, very reasonable in our dealings with the world the purpose is important that's the important thing to understand what's the purpose of foreign policy look uh, the entire purpose of foreign policy is to serve national interest which i would divide into two parts and both are interlinked first is to promote india's domestic agenda of development prosperity and peace so when i say domestic agenda of development and prosperity it's to help secure capital open up export markets for us uh, access technology because we really need technology to take ourselves to next level uh, create employment opportunities abroad with a very large population a very young population as you know and people need good jobs uh, many are available in india but also when you create opportunities abroad uh, you expand uh, the availability of good jobs and assure raw materials because uh, for many critical uh, items we are a very resource poor country and we really have to depend upon imports and to just make sure that we get the raw materials we require for our industries as also for our security uh, next slide please so continuing on the uh, on the purpose of foreign policy the first part was as i said development and prosperity uh, of india and second is india's security uh, on security the the broad rubrics are territorial security and integrity which means our borders should be secure cross border terrorism it's important you know it all we keep seeing it happening Uh, energy security we are a very energy scarce country and we really need energy security because i mean if for example we didn't have petroleum today the whole economy will come on its knees in just a matter of maybe 5 6 months at best food security very large population uh, growing prosperity in the country will require more food and it's important that we have food security for people and environment security uh, as you increasingly see and as you increasingly read about environment 
Uh, this is a major challenge uh, of environment security and the environmental dep uh, depredation anywhere can have impact on us. And for us, it's even more important because uh, Himalayas are very fragile, as you know, but they are, they are among the world's newest mountain ranges. So they are fragile and it can cause, uh, cause havoc. Uh, if, uh, for example, the glaciers were to melt, I mean, where would you get your water from, for example? I'm just giving some examples of why environmental security is very important. Secondly, uh, very closely linked to environmental security is the food security. The weather patterns change and you have far more heat. Uh, how do you grow uh, the requirement of food uh, domestically? So uh, these are the two broad rubrics which the foreign policy focuses to address. I'll repeat, peace and prosperity, uh, sorry, prosperity and development of India, and second is security of India. So each, whenever the question of foreign policy comes and what positions we must take, we invariably internally ask all these questions, will they further our <coughs> domestic agendas of prosperity and development and our security? And, and once these are touchstones on which our judgments are tested. Next slide, please. Okay, what are the challenges we face? The challenges are, some of them are, have been there for a while. Some will keep changing depending on the season. So it works. But, uh, but broadly, these are the challenges that always, that always remain that we have to deal with. And these are the challenges that for the moment we are facing. One is the unpredictability, complexity, and ambiguity. You see, you don't know why countries are doing what they are doing always. At times, you can figure out. At times, you can only guess. At times, uh, it's just a question of deduction. For example, uh, why did Russia... Uh, for example, uh, why did Russia attack the Ukraine? We have some answers, but not necessarily all answers. And why did, uh, why did the West provoke Russia? We have some answers, some understanding, but we are not sure. So these are the unpredictability, complexity, and ambiguity of foreign policy making. Uh, Ukraine conflict, this is a major challenge for us. Ukraine is a, is a major producer of uh, sunflower edible oils, which we import in huge quantities, some uh, critical raw materials, it's an access to uh, the, the, the warm water ports of Russia are uh, in the Black Sea area. Uh, and you, you can rise light, uh, right in the heart of Central Europe. Uh, so it has serious impact on us and all of you are familiar with that. Uh, the third challenge is post-COVID and Ukraine conflict advents for the economy. You can see the West is uh, seriously reeling under the impact of what has uh, the, first the COVID and then the Ukraine conflict. And uh, it's going to take uh, Western Europe a long time to come out. And uh, US, could you please put the mics off? Uh, uh, Sukriti, can you put the mics off of everyone? If somebody is talking, is uh, disturbed and there's echoes. Yes, sir, I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sir, now you have to unmute yourself. I've done that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, we were at post COVID Ukraine conflict headwinds for the economy. Uh, US also is under pressure. Uh, there is, uh, I mean, a large number of economists are talking about Europe, uh, US going to recession. How deep, how long it will be? That's the question. I don't think uh, uh, broadly there's a question of if the US will go into recession. Uh, for our sake, we hope it doesn't. But uh, most economists are talking of US going into recession. It has serious repercussions uh, across the world, uh, including on us, because US is our largest trading partner and a very important uh, source for capital also. If it goes into recession, uh, we, we will have job losses in India, both in the manufacturing side and the services side, which also affects the foreign exchange reserves, which also have, has, has a whole set of repercussions on us. Uh, protectionist and isolationist trends, 
this continue WTO as as of now is pretty much dead and uh, or not even uh, perhaps that's a better word uh, and each country is either trying to figure out its way or through regional trade groupings so uh, the umbrella organization is dysfunctional and and that has serious impact on our uh, on our economy because we are not a part of any large trading block now uh, growing radicalism in Islamic countries, you're familiar with it, you see it every time you hear about it, and uh, those carry this both for internal security and security on the border. Uh, turbulence in the Gulf and Middle East. So there is an uneasy uh, quiet in the Gulf countries, but uh, sub, uh, sub terrain, you can feel the tensions between Iran and other Gulf countries between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Uh, and if you go to the larger Middle East, uh, things are between uh, in Syria, there is turmoil going on. Uh, Libya is right now pretty much a broken state. Uh, things aren't comfortable uh, in the Gulf and the Middle East. Uh, ever increasing assertiveness and aggressiveness of China, you're familiar with it, we'll talk uh, when, more when we talk of China, but you can see it happening and it's not just with us, it's with pretty much all of all of its neighbors and others beyond the neighbors. Uh, the uncertainty of UN foreign policy priorities, uh, slowly some clarity is coming, but it's still not very clear uh, uh, which way the US will go. Uh, whether it will confront China head on or it will uh, basically uh, make threatening noises and uh, and then try to bottle China. Uh, the statements uh, at times like for example on Taiwan, uh, US has officially maintained strategic ambiguity whether it will defend China military, Taiwan militarily or not, but President Bush has a couple of times said he would. So I think maybe it's all, all a game, a game of smoke and mirror, uh, but uh, there's always leave some ambiguity. Uh, not as much for us because we're still large enough to by and large handle ourselves, but for countries, other countries neighboring China, and, and China has tensions with most of them, um, just a question of degrees. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a sense of deep concern because if the new U.S. would stand by them through the thick and the thin, uh, their positions would be different from if U.S. policy is ambiguity, then they have to make their peace with China and they have to buy their peace with China, not making peace, basically buying peace. And then that then changes the whole uh, dynamic. Uh, impact of a weakened EU due to COVID and Ukraine conflict. You see, uh, uh, I think you, uh, EU is, uh, or, or the European, Western European countries, uh, which now include some of the Central European countries like Poland, etc., will join EU. Uh, the economy is in for a serious shock. And I don't think it will be easy for them to uh, maintain the kind of preeminence they enjoyed two, three, four decades back. I think that part is gone. Uh, how much they can salvage from this uh, ongoing economic crisis is the question mark. But my sense is uh, their world has changed. And it has changed uh, not for their good. Uh, and the way they've dealt with the Ukraine conflict shows that they have no uh, free agency to be able to take decisions. And they're completely not just guided, or dictated by the US to do uh, what US asked to ask them to do. Uh, so we'll see uh, how, how Europe reacts to it. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Yep. Uh, global context. I thought I'll just talk a little about global context, the larger picture where the world is going. That's important for you to understand. Uh, this is my sense of how things are. Uh, you may have a different sense because uh, this is uh, after the first two uh, slides on uh, the purposes of India's foreign policy. This, I think, is the most important slide for you to understand this. You see, what's going on right now uh, is uh, the number one power, which is the US, is facing a serious challenge from the number two, which is China. 
and it does not help the number two is showing aggression and 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 as i mentioned it's all around its neighbors it is uh, it is flexing its muscle now historically such periods are very turbulent and unpredictable uh, often those have led to wars i mean one of the reasons why the world war world wars took place was germany felt bottled uh, in europe because uh, you uh, uk and france uh, and and some other european countries had large colonies to fall back on and uh, and uh, draw sustenance germany did not and was feeling completely bottled up uh, and, and and that led to two wars now as i said historically such periods are very turbulent and very unpredictable so uh, and there is a serious risk of miscalculations uh, two hot spot, uh, the, the major hotspot of course is uh, taiwan and miscalculation on either side uh, could have very very serious consequences and uh, so uh, where do we stand uh, look we must uh, while while we are not there yet uh, but uh, it's just a matter of time that we'll be in the number third most important economy in the world uh, according to a very recent morgan stanley report please see that if you have one because it will give you a lot of good facts and enhance your understanding of where india is going uh, the is a matter according to morgan stanley by 2027 which is just uh, five years away we will be third largest economy in the world uh, others are predicting that another by 2035 we might be number 2 so for us uh, it's a in a way how is the question how we handle ourselves uh, we we our salience will increase both for us and for china forget about the daily ups and downs that happens again as a, it's a game of smokes and mirror it will continue but uh, for uh, for us it's, it's a very good very good spot to be in if we handle our, handle it well because uh, number one would need us to maintain its position and uh, number two would need us to become number one and that's that's a that's a great sweet spot to be in as long as i said you 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 can play your cards well so uh, it it should be a very exciting period it will be full of challenges so don't think it's going to be a smooth ride for us it will be full of challenges and also uh looking further ahead when when you guys are say mid aged uh, or maybe in your 50s uh, we are looking at india being perhaps the most dominant of the largest economy in the world which others won't let you reach there so don't don't take it that there anybody is going to allow you to go there you have to fight every inch of the way so it's it's, it's a great period for us with full of challenges full of complexities uh, require which will require very very deft handling of our diplomacy of our strategic choices it's a very exciting period to be in uh, next slide please okay so before i come to uh, relations with the us so far on the four slides that you have go i've gone through uh, any questions sukuti so ji any question then you please uh, un un uh, unmute the mic of the questioner Uh, Are there any questions? If there are none, then we'll move forward. Sorry, one. Ah, uh, you can unmute yourself, ask the question, and then mute. Uh, sir, uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah, Rohan. Uh, sir, I had this question uh, regarding uh, one of the pillars in development and peace. You said is to promote employment opportunities abroad. Yes. Uh, the, this is, but this is also a recurring question that India is facing uh, brain drain. So, how do we answer that uh, uh, with respect to these uh, expanding employment opportunities abroad, sir? So, uh, first of all, uh, uh, there will be multiple answers on this. First is uh, when you are talking of employment opportunities abroad, uh, a very large number of them. are more people in the lower and middle level jobs right. it's not a serious brain drain particularly in the gulf most of the employment is at the lower and middle uh, level 
which is where bulk of our people are employed. So uh, it's not a brain drain, it's a uh, gainful, useful employment. And uh, uh, those are very good employments for us because uh, most of them remit most of the savings back home. Gotcha. Those who go to US, uh, after a point, they don't remit money back home. So they know their lives are there now. They are not going to come back. Anybody who goes to Gulf knows most of them will have to come back. When they retire, when the contract is over, they have to come back to India. So, so they build their future, keeping in mind their return to India. Those who go to uh, US or other Western countries, uh, they build their future, keeping in mind that we have to stay there. Number one. Number two, as to brain drain, I mean, uh, fortunately, I think we have enough pool of brains. So even, even if uh, 50,000, 100,000 people with, with very good brains migrate abroad, I don't think it's going to uh, be a huge challenge for us. As long as we know how to uh, nurture and utilize the brains that are available to us in India. And we have huge bandwidth of it. Uh, Secondly, so that is one part of the answer. Secondly, those who go abroad, uh, they become your uh, ambassadors. And, uh, you know, as, as there's a good saying that you can take an Indian out of India, but you can't take India out of an Indian. So whether it is a Sundar Pichai or a, a Satya Narela or Raj Subramaniam or Indra Nui, they all have uh, India in their heart. And they, they work to uh, they work for the companies they work and they are doing superb job as you know some of the best companies are run by Indians today, including number one and number two, except Tesla. So uh, they are they are being run by Indians, and and they are a bridge actually because they bring a lot of investments to India. They help uh, because they understand India, so they can advocate. Uh, they can, they become great advocates of India, and they can uh, they can handle operations back home because they understand how India functions. So I think it's a uh, it's a wonderful spot to be in for us to have uh, such bright people going abroad. Uh, yes, occasionally it misses, but as I said, because we have, we haven't nurtured the brains available here. We have enough plenty of brains, we're good brains. So I would not be concerned about it. And many of them are coming back now, also yes. for setting up businesses. Hmm? Uh, have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Next question. Any other question? Yeah, Bhavna. Yes. Unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Yeah, so my question is, as you said that the number one power is facing a serious challenge from the number two. So how can United States gain some strategic advantages against China by playing the Taiwan card? Well, you see, uh, I, uh, Taiwan card is uh, basically to rattle China, number one keep it under pressure, number two. Uh, number three, how do you galvanize others to your point of view? There has to be some cause. And it uses Taiwan as one of the causes to put pressure on China. And if you, if you, uh, and perhaps the last point, uh, if you, uh, I don't know how much map reading you have done, but please do that. You see, on the western side, uh, and talking of sea, China is, can be throttled and bottled mainly by blocking the Malacca Strait. That's it. There's no other easy navigation channel except uh, around Australia for China's trade to take place. And 65% of China's uh, oil comes from uh, Gulf and other countries. So it has to come by Indian Ocean. So if you block Malacca Strait, and if uh, and, and that's the reason why you see uh, why Australia is important both to us and to Americans, more to Americans. And that's the reason why America forced Australia to cancel the nuclear, uh, conventional nuclear, uh, sorry, conventional uh, submarine deal with France and go for a nuclear submarine deal with the US. Because nuclear submarines have very, very long range. 
uh, and, and they can remain in sea for a very long time. And uh, this was to eventually build Australia's cap capability also to throttle China from uh, or Chinese trade from going around Australia. So that is one part of it, which is the western side. If you look at the eastern side, uh, the series of island states, Guam, where America has a big base, very big base, and is, is only increasing further. Uh, the northern side is Japan, and then there's Taiwan. So if all these three entities are hostile to China, you see, even moving out of out into Pacific, I'm not saying it won't happen, but it will require serious effort. It will require a serious military support. So such a large country like China can be throttled from two sides. Uh, uh, if if you if these all the, all these island states like Japan, Taiwan, and, uh, and Guam are controlled, and and then of course parts of Philippines. So that, that's that's a serious concern. China also understands this game. Some of us, all of, most of us understand it. That's that's the reason why Taiwan has to be separate. Besides, it's being a political pinprick. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Uh, Whoever put the hand first. Uh, so, Yogesh, you please. Uh, good, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I just had a question about the strategic sweet spot that you spoke of, sir. We've been reading about it in the newspapers lately. Mm -hmm. Sir, I just uh, wanted to know whether we are actually in a uh, in a sweet spot in the sense that are we really the swing state or have we given the game away by being part of Quad? Uh, is it truly a sweet spot? Are we part of an alliance? And two, sir, like... If we are in that sweet spot, if we are the, the power broker of the world now, as the G20 would sort of help us think, sir, uh, sir what material gains would come out of it? Or is it just for Pratishtha that we're just a power broker? Or would we get greater market access or would we get nuclear submarines? What would what difference would it make, sir? Thank you. Okay. Uh, no, very, very valid points. Uh, we, we are not in it for uh, uh, vanity, for sure. Okay. You know, I think we are smarter than that. And this government and uh, 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 this prime minister and this foreign minister are far too smart for that. Okay. So they are in it for it, they are not in it for as a vanity project. See, as I said, see it like this that our ambition, at least this is my ambition, I'm sure it should be your ambition. I now, as I said, uh, past uh, my prime uh, just a question of uh, waiting for the maker to call me but you guys are still young you know you have future ahead of you uh, you, see, you must aspire that india should be number one historically till the 18th century china and india were the dominant economies in the world more than half of world's economy was india and china or china and india whichever way you want to put it it's just the last 200 years have been bad for us so i mean in a country which has a history of a few thousand years, whatever number you want to put, you can put, but I mean, we know it's a history of a few thousand years. What is 200 years? Yes, in individual lives, yes, 200 years, because none of us are going to live for 200 years. Okay, but in the country's life, what is 200 years? Our time is coming. And you must aspire to be number one. I mean, we were at one point of time number one. We should again become number one. So that is a larger ambition of... Uh, some of these uh, uh, people who are running our government today. It may not happen in their lifetime, but that's okay. What's the big deal about it? And we, we didn't fight because everything will get it. So you could get it, you will fight it so that your children can get it and they can say, 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 they as I said right at the beginning, it's not going to be easy. But as long as number three, number one, number two need you. But the moment you become number two, I think the game will be different. And when you want to become number one, it will become different. Perhaps number two and number three will gang up against you. But that's the nature of things. And that is the nature of things. US, it was US which created this large monstrous economy called China. By shifting its manufacturing support, they need for strength and riches to weaken Russia. Now today they don't know how to handle this monster. So they made this one large mistake, they are not going to repeat it. Trust me on this. So they are not going to let you become number one. They want you to remain number three and help them. 
to keep China number two or maybe even bring it down. But uh, so that's how it's going to be. So that's the game that you have to play. And how well you play, play, and how you manage and leverage your relationship with one to get benefits out of the other is your game. That is your game. Uh, in terms of strategy, in terms of uh, uh, material benefits, how quickly you build your economy. So this China plus one helps us. So we must uh, full time boost this narrative. China plus one is very important. Okay, now industries will go where? Some will go to Vietnam because they are they are perhaps ahead of us in terms of work ethic, in terms of you know systems working well. Some may go to Indonesia, but at the end of it, who has this kind of manpower? We are the only ones, and who has this kind of brain power? We are the only ones. Now we have to sort a lot of internal demons. We have to sort a lot of internal issues, etc. It will happen, and so lot of uh, lot of crises you see today or the are manufactured. Trust me, the, the farmers' agitation or this agitation that they all manufactured agitations. The farmers' agitation you see didn't happen immediately. It took a few weeks before it happened. It was manufactured. because the the, the, whole, the law only helps farmers and when it happened only two states of india punjab and haryana which are wheat growing and rice growing as there was no, 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 parts of rajasthan parts of madhya pradesh but no one else so farmers were not agitated anywhere else occasionally they came for dharna etc but where was the agitation the manufactured agitation and those manufactured agitations will continue so if i could add here because you asked this question uh, and let me take you back to uh, because you are still very young uh, so it will give you some sense of uh, 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 historical perspective on this historical perspective only post independence i'm not going back to uh, long history is meaningless but post independence because we're talking of current era and we're talking of a uh, of a of a system which is uh, governed by westphalian system that you know national states are sacred percent etc etc So uh, each time India had a strong nationalist government, uh, crises were manufactured. What happened? Okay, now I will I leave it to you to judge whether those were manufactured or not manufactured. I am not saying that there were no there were no causes behind it. See, you can't create nothing. Uh, you can't create everything out of nothing. Something has to be there. But then, how you play the game? And the, those games were played against us. So look at it. Uh, uh, first, in the Gandhi government. and that's i have very clear memories of it uh, i don't go beyond before that because we didn't have a very strong nationalist government we had a very popular government pandit nehru etc but we didn't have very strong nationalist government so look at what mrs gandhi did first and then see what happened to her okay uh, do you guys have time and patience uh, otherwise i can move on to next slide but it's very useful to understand this i said to answer questions and to understand uh, uh, why things are happening the way they are happening i am glad you asked this question so in 1971 she uh, uh, bangladesh was created 1974 sikkim became part of india to make sure that uh, it doesn't become another tibet 1974 we did a peaceful nuclear explosion right and guess what happens by 75 the government is stopping There were agitation. You won't remember it. You were not born there. I was born, and I was actually I had done my college in 1975, so I know there were no jobs. There were crises all over. Uh, Gujarat, Chimur uh, Bai Mehta's uh, Mehta's government was challenged. George Fernandez was uh, did this massive rail uh, railway strike. The whole country was literally paralyzed. Don't think. I mean, uh, don't think it just happened like that. All of a sudden. and a very strong nationalist government was brought to his heels for knees okay one flash uh, fast forward uh, atal bihari bajpay government and i was i was part of that uh, and then the prime minister office so i can I had some some view of that i have seen some of things he does the nuclear test in 1998 okay and in 8 months his government is gone the government which has which had a majority now loses the majority okay okay elections happened <laughs> he came back but he literally lost the government at one point of time and somebody else would have been the prime minister but for mulayam singh yadav okay strong nationalist government what happened 
now the third very strong nationalist government. Let's look at the crisis after crisis. One crisis leads to another crisis are being manufactured, except that this government is way ahead and, and, uh, and, and this team is way ahead of others. They know how to handle it. But there's no shortage of crises, whether it is a manufactured crisis on CA. I mean, CA, hey, what CA kya hai? It is to give nationality, not to take anybody's nationality. So where is the, where is the issue? Uh, why are you and me worried about it? They're not taking away your nationality or my nationality. They cannot. By law, they cannot. It is about how to give nationality to people who, who may have been persecuted. And this is a part of your constitution. This is a part of your constitutional debate and a part, and a part of the commitments made in the parliament. Article 370. I mean, your constitution says it's a temporary provision. You remove it and look at the uh, controversies they have been created. So these are manufactured crises or controversies. Why? To weaken a government, to weaken a strong nationalist government. And this has happened, as I said, three, I've given you three examples of three very strong nationalist governments, the three most nationalist governments in India, and how and the kind of flag they are facing. So when we were number 10th, number 15th, number 20th, and number 5th, it's like this. Think about it, number 3 and number 2 will become full, and when you knock on the door, number 1, what's going to happen to you? Keep yourself very, very alert on this. Uh, and, and that requires a lot of internal clarity. Okay. I think, uh, uh, Prakar, quickly your question and then we move on. Otherwise, Sara Shami I have no right. problems, but then you guys may have other things yeah. to do. Uh, good, good evening, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, just uh, coming, to ba coming back to that sweet spot question only, you uh -huh. know that uh, there are always news coming that India is required by US. But mm -hmm. sir, uh, you said that even the number two requires the number three to come to number one position. Mm -hmm. But we are not seeing a lot of cooperation from China in terms of cooperating with India to gain a prominent position. It's more of a, I would say, confrontational relationship. So uh, where is China cooperating with us? Apart from the climate talks, there is no way China is cooperating with us. It is basically creating problems. Okay, so uh, uh, your valid point, let me answer this question. And this is a very valid point. Uh, so as I said, uh, foreign policy or how you make it and uh, interpreting what others are doing uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is the fog. And you're trying to see through the fog. Okay, uh, so it's partly historical understanding of the country, partly current situation, partly as I said, is a game of smoke and mirrors. Now, for example, okay, let me just theoretically ask you a question. Suppose China wants to do a deal with India. Again, for this reason that uh, without India's support, or without, India, without, or if India is on the US side, then life for China would not be there. I said, we can just throttle Malacca straight. And they, they have no escape. And there's no way you, you can you can bring Chinese economy to knees, knees, literally to knees. Okay. And just Malacca straight. Okay. Yeah. And, and and it's not very far from Andaman Nicobar Islands. Yeah. So we have uh, we have physical presence there. And if America is with us, then of course uh, you they can't even go around Australia. Now, see it like this. If you were to settle this, how do you do it? I'm just guessing. I said it's a game of smoke and mirror. It is ambiguity. You, you only can at best conjecture. Yeah. And first thing is soften India and then offer a, a deal which is, uh, uh, but first after the is okay, let me put it like this in very simple, simple language. So don't, don't uh, like, what if I were to put a gun on your head and say, ke chalo apna batwa de do. <laughs> okay, le jao, yaar, jaan to do kam se. Yeah. Hai na? Okay. Yes. But if I tell you I'll take your brother or sister or your wife, then you will fight it. So then it becomes different. So then you say, I've no choice. Nahi. So it is just a question of putting a pressure on us so that, that they can get a deal at a very low cost. Yes. Okay. So you deal with me differently if you don't have a gun. <laughs> okay? And if you love your life. So, see, this seems to be, as I said, I, I, I've not uh, entered into sheep uh, things mind, but this is happening around all the, all the neighboring countries. Yes, sir. One way could be just soften them. 
and then do a reasonable deal, where, where reasonable which may appear to them because they will soften substantially. Okay? And then move on. And then simply sub, sub, sort out again. Basically at their terms, and then you and then they all become your allies because they are afraid of you. You put a fear. Now the way we have been act, reacting to it is very different. And Galwan was the limit. That where we said bus enough is enough, So you everybody makes miscalculations. Trust me, the Zare Dunyaki Laranjo he has often they're miscalculations. Okay. Yes. And they may have miscalculated. They may miss because again, it's a game of smokes and mirrors. You, you, they may feel that India will last time drive, which lay up, free drive, free, which lay up, free, or no, Jada, which Kahani, throw throw throw, okay, later is back. We could call it then. We didn't work out this time. So, uh, as I said, this is a question of uh, that is the whole ambiguity in this business of foreign policy, interpreting the actions of others. And this is my interpretation. You may have a different interpretation. Okay, now one way could be a threat and they will simply say military be kitna kharcha karenge. Here is the economy which is five times as large as ours. How much are you going to spend on defense? And how much should you fight for a few more uh, square kilometers? Okay, that's one way of looking at it. And again, there's a question of uh, what the leadership is and how they interpret these actions. And one way simply, let's draw the line now. And let me give an example of it. In a different, uh, with a different country, uh, Pakistan has been using uh, terrorism against us. 2008, hua, the then government decided, Kargil hua, because I was in PMO when this happened and I was involved in this. And we decided to go and take it back. Okay. 2008, hua, Bombay, mein, uske pehle, thi, but Bombay was big, really big one. And we did nothing except making noises. Okay. 2000, uh, uh, Pulwama hua, Uri hua, we went back and hit them. Governments react differently because it's a question of how they see things. And they simply said, we have to draw the line today. If it has to happen, let it happen. But this can't continue. In the past, we allowed it to continue by making noises and always going like cry baby to America, karo, kuch karo, kuch karo. Na? Declare Pakistan terrorist state. Aap to kar rahe, unko bol rahe karne ke liye. You didn't appear to be serious. Now this government appears to be very serious. So you you so you change the rules of the game. And you are changing the rules of the game in a number of things. Look at the clarity with which you're buying Russian oil. Sarah Western European leaders are I mean, if you just see after uh, last February, I mean, this February, or up there, hardly any Western European country was a leader in our past. So, again, and you still held your uh, ground and you simply say, I'm going to tell you, I'm this is a question of how people deal. Nationalist governments deal very differently from, uh, I'm not saying they were anti national. Please don't, don't misunderstand me. Right, that's why I said they're strong nationalist governments. For them, security of India comes ahead of even a, a financial price. And if I could add to this argument, uh, at least four prime ministers of India toyed with doing nuclear tests. This is all part of uh, books and all that. So it's not, I'm not revealing any state secrets. Narsi Marar thought of it, backed out. Devagoda thought of it, backed out. Gujar Sahib thought of it, backed out. Same objective reality. Two years ago, what was the in Hindustan? We were in the middle of the day. 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 We were in the middle of the All these governments came between 95 and 98, two and a half years. Same objective reality of the country, by and large. Mr. Bajpayee comes and within, uh, I think, <laughs> the first or second day orders nuclear tests. The nuclear tests took, uh, took place in 45, 50 days. We could take this, we can do it. We could muster the courage to do it. The question of leadership and how they thought about what was India's priority for future of India. Okay. This is answer your question now. Challenge next karan, ito ye kare rahenge, hum loo isi ki baat karte rahenge. Baad mein jab, when you finish everything, your some questions will be there.
And so uh, relations with US, I've already explained to you the another context, etc. has always sorted out. So rest is very easy to understand. So with the US, our relationship is very large, very important. Perhaps the most important relationship we have today is with the US across board. And you guys read it so you can figure it out. Trade, defense, technology, you name it. Uh, we, we are doing it, investment, security, space, you know, civil nuclear, so on and so forth. PM has personally invested very heavily in this relationship. We are what the US, we, we are now the global strategic, uh, we have a global strategic partnership. We are a major defense partner. They are giving us some cutting edge technologies, which they give to uh, their closest allies. We have this two plus two dialogue, which is a defense minister and foreign minister, joint naval exercises. We are also buying some uh, 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 cutting edge US uh, defense uh, purchases. We are making those. Bilateral uh, trade is among us. Last it was $145 billion. Uh, and there's a growing influence of the 3.5 million diaspora, which is ever increasing, uh, including the US government. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Biden's policies and implications for India. That's important. Uh, you see, uh, Biden, uh, there's now a US stress on multilateralism, which is good for India because it's not uh, individual countries deciding or dictating the agenda, but uh, done through multilateralism. And we are very comfortable with that. Uh, we may not be comfortable once we become number one, but today we are very comfortable. Uh, easing of US visas was one of the actions that they have taken. Approach to China or the Biden government. When I say Biden, actually I'll say US because there's a deep state in the US where there's a broad convergence of uh, direction. So I would think that uh, uh, whatever Prime Minister, uh, President Biden is saying and doing and what the US deep state is doing, I think it's now an adversarial relationship. Uh, no matter how they couch it, they're very clear that China could become number one, going back to what I had mentioned, the context as I understand it, uh, they feel China could become number one and they will not, they will try their damnedest to make sure it doesn't happen, uh, which is not bad for us, as long as we know how to play our cards well. Uh, and then uh, they're using all kinds of arguments, concert of democracy. Uh, if you look at the record, I don't think it's very great in terms of supporting democracies. But uh, they all, as I said, they're all ways of uh, creating a bad image of uh, uh, China. And there's a good saying, you know, if you want to kill a dog first, uh, label it as mad and it becomes very easy to do the rest. So this will happen and this will continue to happen. I really don't see uh, how US will easily concede its number one position. It's not going to easily do it. So uh, there will be complexities and there'll be challenges and there'll be problems that will that we should be ready for in this uh, China-US dynamic. Uh, promotion of human rights, we'll find pinpricks. And again, you see, now you must have read recently that uh, uh, they had, uh, they gave some um, spare parts, et cetera, to Pakistan, et cetera. Again, trying to put pressure on us. So they're trying both the, the they can't figure out how to handle us now, frankly. So they're trying to put pressure on us, maybe less, so that, you know, we get, oh, China, Pakistan, what are we doing? So let's make a peace with the US. Uh, it's not happening now. As I said, this, uh, whatever, this dispensation sees things very differently. Uh, that's okay. They want to give it to Pakistan. Then that's their choice. And, uh, uh, we can live with this print. We know they are print pricks, okay? Because uh, eventually the game is who wins our heart. So <laughs> they will, soon or later they'll come back to us. We don't have to worry about it. They are minor print pricks, we just learn to live with it. Secondly, it's also important for them to keep their equities with Pakistan. So uh, obviously they'll do a few things for Pakistan. And since they don't really want to bail Pakistan economy out, and the few things that they could do is give some spare parts for F-16, etc. It served double purpose, helps put some pressure on us and uh, helps uh, wean the Pakistani army away from, which is the main power broker there, away from, uh, slowly away from China. So it serves the objectives. 
So that's uh, uh, broadly the US policy and our relationship with US. Uh, next slide, please. We'll do two, three country and then we can take questions. Uh, Russia, uh, time-tested partnership, annual summits, we have 21, hopefully 22nd will take place sometime this year or later maybe. Uh, defense, we have very close relations, Russian tanks, uh, Russian aircrafts, Russian planes, helicopters, they're all mainstay. After what has happened in Ukraine, I think we need to wake up uh, and perhaps uh, check out whether uh, they are really the best uh, technologies. But then I think uh, our, our, uh, our focus now, again, this, again, this is one of the things that very strong nationalist government do, that we need to be at the in, in major defense technologies. And so they are focusing on a lot of domestic production and if not domestic production, joint production in India, developing domestic technology. So you will see in the next 10, 15 years, because these things, things take time, do take a lot of time. Uh, but in 15, 20 years, when you guys are in your late 30s, early 40s, you'll see a very, very potent Indian Defense Force, uh, mainly on the strength of its own manufacturing capabilities. Uh, some of the things that I mentioned, Brahmos missiles, now fifth generation fighter aircraft, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are we are making, we are going ahead in procuring energy again. Now Russia is a very important source. In fact, now Russia is the most important source of oil for us in the last few months, and uh, this is what has rattled the U.S. a bit. But it suits us because we have, I think, uh, from what I've read, that the last count we had saved about 25 billion dollars in buying Russian crude, as opposed to if you had bought uh, crude from uh, non-discounted crudes. Now, $35 billion is a lot of money for us. So uh, it's like about uh, how much? Two lakh, 30, 40,000 crore rupees. There's a huge amount of money. I mean, it's one third of your, uh, of your defense budget. It's coming purely out of saving that uh, we have been able to affect by buying Russian oil. And, and we have held our ground, so that's also important in this game of smokes and mirrors. Uh, stress issues with Russia are uh, basically Ukraine uh, conflict because you know, it's, it, has, it has put a lot of stress on our other relationships. Uh, and Russia's strained relationship with the West and is now only going to, won't be easy. Uh, to salvage it, uh, to take a long haul, if at all, uh, will we'll continue to put pressure on us. And uh, and Russia's and, and the more Russia comes under pressure with the West, the more it will lean towards China, which is not good for us. Our main concern is that. So we will have to handle this. We'll have to be alive to this, and we'll have to deal with it as we go along. So far, uh, Russians uh, seem to have been true to us. So. Uh, so far, it's working. Uh, our our non-condemnatory approach towards their actions, reconciliatory uh, efforts to do whatever, they, at least uh, not condemn them and not uh, go after them and continue to buy oil, etc., uh, is is an important uh, uh, element uh, for them because they know now they can trust us. Uh, under serious stress, also we have been a good friend. Uh, next slide, please. China, I mean, you, you know about 1962's war and the, uh, and the shadow still remains. Uh, so about 38,000 square kilometer territory occupied in JNK, it claims 90,000 kilometers in the eastern sector, which mainly is Arunachal Pradesh, a very long border with it. After the 62 war, things really went uh, south with uh, China. Uh, and then Rajiv Gandhi's visit to China began a new chapter. Uh, a lot of foundational agreements, a lot of uh, agreements were signed over a period of time to make sure uh, the whole effort was to, uh, was to de-link the border issue by keeping it quiet and peaceful and build other elements of the relationship so that both countries had huge stakes to maintain peace and tranquility on the border till we found 
found solutions to it. Uh, so uh, this continued for until the last few years. Uh, even though there were incursions regularly, minor incursions, they would blame us, we would blame them. That continued, but nothing significant ha happened. Once in a while it did happen, but uh, broadly it was managed. Uh, and bilateral trade gave the other, other uh, component of this relationship that keep peace and tranquility on the border and build the rest of the relationship, which, uh, which went on well, except that bilateral trade was mainly in China, hugely in China's favor. And that also became a, a, a issue for us now because it's a huge dependency that we have uh, in, in, in most of our critical sectors. There's a harsh reality which we must face and which we are now trying to address through PLI and other schemes. Uh, our pharmaceutical industry, uh, and, and we talk so much of it and we are proud of it, uh, could again get a serious shock if we don't get the APIs from China. It's dependent upon mainly Chinese. Uh, APIs. Our automobile industry is hugely dependent upon Chinese components. Our EV sector is hugely dependent upon Chinese batteries and Chinese uh, materials. And this is, uh, electronic sector is hugely dependent upon that. So the huge uh, dependency that we have on China now, we're trying to uh, change this, but it's going to take a long time. And, uh, and but we have to work for it. So uh, 2002 incursions in Ladakh uh, in a way, uh, was was serious because the loss of life. It was actually fighting, serious fighting. Before that, we never had a fight uh, since 1967. Uh, so it was a uh, it was a serious thing, and I think it, in a way it was eye opener for us, and in a way it was a wake up call for us that uh, China perhaps does not think it's important to have a peace and tranquil border with us. Uh, regardless of uh, so many developments on the bilateral side in terms of trade, cultural relationship, people to people exchanges, all that. So uh, that's a wake up call. I think we have woken up to it now. How much we'll be able to address it in the immediate is another matter. But over a period of time, yes, we will. Uh, stress issues, uh, of course, uh, the non settlement of boundaries, support to Pakistan increasing footprint in our neighborhood, needling us by attempting to bring Kashmir issue in the UN Security Council, risk of diverting waters from shared rivers in the Northeast, all major stress issues with us. So uh, this relationship uh, will be a very challenging relationship for the next 20, 30 years. Uh, but I think uh, this is something that you guys will have to deal with. Uh, next slide. Uh, should we do questions on China, Russia, and uh, US, or you want to run through the entire slide, set of slides, and then we do the questions? And then what would you want it? Uh, let me just finish the slides now because uh, we have done the context, we have done the major thing, and now let's just go through the various relationships and then we can do all the questions. So some of the questions might already get ans answered when I'm making the presentation. So Pakistan, the relationship is complex, uh, rooted in our partition, and both countries haven't got out of it. It's long border. Uh, India is a, v, a glue which keeps Pakistan together. There's the harsh reality uh, for Pakistan. Uh, and uh, they just somehow can't digest it. So, uh, I mean, they, they always seem to have an identity crisis. Uh, we have had three major wars, 48, 65, 71. We have had problems in, in 1999 and Kargil. They've been interfering in Punjab, in Jammu and Kashmir, supporting, also supporting cross-border terrorism in other parts of India. Basically what they call the thousand cut strategy. Thousand, uh, each government in India has made efforts to resolve differences with Pakistan. But uh, I think Pakistan's hostility towards India seems to be implacable. Uh, in part, they're still concerned that uh, what happened to them in 71 may repeat it. And secondly, there's a very low cost option for a country which is otherwise uh, now very weak as compared to us economically and perhaps also 
militarily. So they, they keep doing this to us. Uh, Pulwama and Uri perhaps have changed this. Uh, let's see how, how long this holds and how long this continues. Uh, but this is a complex relationship and I really don't see any easy way out of this relationship. But Pakistan's rezo death is hostility towards India. Secondly, the major power broker in Pakistan is the army. If there is no, uh, you see, if there is no uh, discord around, uh, why would the uh, uh, state uh, sustain such a large army and such an expensive army which is which eats up, sucks up most of the state's resources. So uh, there's a challenge. Army can't, uh, having gotten used to living off the fat of the land, now they really don't want to. And they've tasted so much of power that they really can't let it go easily. So uh, uh, challenges in Pakistan will continue. Uh, its own internal dynamic will also make it more difficult to sort this out. We just have to be patient. We have to be patient, we have to be a little aloof, which is what we are now doing. And basically just treating them as a nuisance, that's all. So we, we have now offered no uh, olive branch, we just treat them as a nuisance, uh, just to keep them under pressure. Uh, and let's see how what happens uh, as we go forward. But it's, uh, so far right now, it's just basically managing the relationship. It doesn't uh, get out of hand, basically. Next slide, please. Uh, Sri Lanka, because right now it's in the news, so I thought I'll just tell you. It's a very long relationship, you know. Buddhism went there 2,500 years back. It's a broad-based relationship. Uh, because Sri Lanka has gone through three decades of armed conflict, which ended in 2009. So while the armed conflict ended in 2009, there's been no rapprochement between the uh, the Tamil population and the Snada population. So that uh, meeting of hearts is, is missing. Uh, India has supported Sri Lanka's actions against terrorism, but has emphasized the rights of Tamil minority should be protected. So that remains a bone of contention between us, uh, but there's nothing we can do about it or should do about it. Uh, trade is about $4.7 billion, uh, mainly in our favor. Fisherman issue is a major issue uh, in terms of headlines. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very minor issue otherwise. Uh, they are captured, they are sent back, but you know it, ca it captures uh, headlines ever, ever so often. And so it becomes, it sucks up a lot of diplomatic energy out of this relationship. Uh, the growing Chinese presence in Sri Lanka uh, is, is a concern for us, particularly the Amman Rota port. Uh, uh, we have been able to uh, to, uh, to prevail over Sri Lanka not to uh, do the same thing for airports, etc. But we'll have to learn to live with this. And Sri Lanka, like other neighbors of ours, would want to play this China card to extract maximum benefits out of us. So we'll have to learn to play this game. Uh, and, and we are trying to do that. Uh, mainly, I think the stress issue in the relationship is treatment of Tamils and China factor. So uh, that's broadly the relationship with uh, Sri Lanka. Right now it's in deep trouble. It will take years and years before uh, it can uh, repair its economy. And uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it was perhaps in terms of social indexes, it, it was perhaps the best uh, economy in this, uh, in the uh, South region uh, or uh, South Asia. Uh, no longer, it's going to take a lot of time. It made some serious mistakes. Uh, development was just focused on a few sectors and then on agriculture. Uh, I, I think they made some wrong calculations and they thought that by supplying the world with the, uh, the what you call uh, uh, natural products or foods uh, and uh, farm produce grown without chemicals, they would be able to uh, increase the uh, value addition it has fallen flat and a country which otherwise could have uh, exported a lot of food uh, items is now actually in that uh, is a serious importer so i'm sure they'll do the correct they're, they're smart people and uh, hopefully in a few years they'll come out of it uh, next slide please bangladesh i think today if you're asking with the neighbors 
uh, after uh, Bhutan, Bangladesh is our closest neighbor in terms of relationship. We have a very long border with probably the longest border we have uh, with any countries with Bangladesh. Uh, last five decades has seen much progress. By and large, it's been a, uh, it's been a good run in relationships, occasional downs when Zia uh, uh, Huck's uh, government took over and Zia uh, Ramas and uh, Khalida, um, when her party comes to power, then the relationship becomes a little tense and uh, stressful. But with Sheikh Hasina, we have a very friendly relationship and uh, we're, we have solved a lot of problems, a lot of issues have been resolved. There are some more uh, which need to be resolved and I'm sure we'll do it as we go along. I just look at it, you know, we have, we share for 54 rivers. Each becomes an issue, you know. So uh, we just have to find, we have sorted out with the Ganga Water Treaty, these ties again, um, uh, is something which we want to sort out, but then it becomes a part of our domestic politics. So it has to be handled gingerly, but desire is to sort this out. Trade is very important uh, for us also because uh, and we have we have a huge trade surplus in Bangladesh. Uh, Rohingya issue tested our relationship, but we manage it well. <coughs> CA <coughs> is proving tested because uh, understandably they feel that it's targeting the Bangladeshis in India, the illegal Bangladeshis in India. So and which could become a political issue for them domestically. So we'll have to see how we handle it. Uh, stress issues, again, one is action, our actions against migrant labor, which, uh, uh, which becomes an issue in Bangladesh. And secondly, again, the Chinese presence in uh, Bangladesh. So that's uh, the uh, sum and substance of the relationship. But uh, as I said, right now, I think after uh, Bhutan, this is the best relationship we have with our neighbors. Next slide. Uh, Nepal is a special relationship. As they say, roti beti ka samman hai. Nepalese nationals have, uh, uh, have uh, equal treatment in India of, uh, as Indian nationals. Uh, in fact, uh, till, uh, till the 80s, uh, they could, uh, Nepalese could become the foreign secretary of India or maybe even the army chief of India. So uh, now, of course, those provisions have been taken out, not the army, but for the civil service. They can't uh, join Indian uh, uh, IAS, IPS, and foreign service, but uh, central service, they still could till some time back. I don't know whether it continues now. Uh, I think it continues. Uh, so uh, it's, a, uh, it's a relationship which is very close, historical, people to people, intermarriages, a free movement of people. At least from Nepal, uh, when Indians go there, they, they put restrictions, understandably. I mean, they are just about three crore people. We are 130 crore people. So obviously they have, uh, I mean, their concerns are different. Uh, very intense civilizational links. Uh, uh, there's a deep engagement at every level, including uh, our support to Nepal. Uh, there are many challenges in the relationship, uh, particularly in, uh, in a Nepalese democracy, which is not yet stabilized. So democracy is there, but it's not yet stabilized. So democracy have some rules of the game. And the rule of the game is that, you know, the power, the, the handover of power, the change of power should be orderly and, and decided by the people. Uh, so they're they are still learning those things. Then there is this uh, Pahadi Madesi divide, which, uh, and, and Pahadi uh, like to play this. Um, uh, to put Badesis uh, in, in a way on the, on the, on the, on the, on the back foot. And, uh, and somehow uh, they believe that India supports Madesis uh, because India considers them uh, almost like Indians. So this becomes a political issue. Uh, otherwise, there's no, there's no genuine irritant in the relationship, all manufactured. Kalapani issue. I mean, this is an issue which has been there, but all sorted out, but then becomes a political issue each time when Nepalese government uh, uh, is under pressure, then they start doing these things of um, Kalapani pe kya hoga, iska kya hoga. Uh, those are the pinpricks that they use uh, for uh, purely for domestic uh, political purposes, uh, but then it, it starts impacting relationships. Uh, but by and large, it's manageable. 
uh, stress issues are destabilized political situation in variably sucks in India. I mean, this is the this is the only election I have seen in recent times in Nepal where India is not a major factor in the game. Although it was always you know South Bloc interference, uh, India interfering in politics. That this time it's not been there. Uh, mercifully, I think so. Uh, Again, as I said, as their democracy evolves and it stabilizes, it settles, they learn the rules of the game. All these things will slowly die away. But this is going to be, this is going to take time, and we just have to be patient, a bit indulgent, and also firm when required in dealing with Nepal. Uh, stress issues are that destabilized political situation, China factor, which is very important again because Nepal is only two major neighbors India and China uh, and the security aspect uh, and unsettled borders at two points uh, which are easily resolvable if Nepal shows some uh, desire to solve them. Uh, next slide please. Uh, Gulf region uh, is, is very important to us now. It's the largest trading partner, it's the largest source of uh, remittances, it's the huge source of employment. I think over 8 million Indians live there. It's a very large number. Uh, I think the remittances uh, are over $50 billion and that is what comes to normal banking channels. Uh, uh, it's, uh, and it's a relationship which has really transformed in the last few years particularly under this government, uh, they have really transformed this relationship. The relationship is no longer dealing with NRIs and dealing with uh, you know, labor issues, which, which continue to remain and uh, bedevil us, but it's much larger now. It's a truly a strategic relationship. Uh, they see us as a major factor of stability in the Gulf region. See, and here, let me point, let me point this out. This is important in any analysis that you do. So, uh, see, if there is instability in the Gulf, who would be the, who would be the responders? See, earlier it was very clear U.S. would be the responder because U.S. was dependent on Gulf oil. It was, so it will be uh, a major stabilizing it's a stabilizing factor which will stabilize the situation there now us is the net exporter of oil so it doesn't need gulf oil us today does not need any country's oil between what it has and what uh, canada has and perhaps what uh, the the, uh, the remaining american continent has it, is, it has plenty of oil so i don't think they're worried about oil as a factor which was earlier a challenge for them so they had to make sure so today and you know you interfere particularly in far off countries uh, either when you have some vital national interest at stake or you don't want that the other country or a set of countries falling under the um, 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 uh, falling in the lap of your adversary so uh, that is not the challenge right now because uh, russia is no longer in a position and China is too far uh, physically to do anything. So India is the only country which actually will be a stabilizing factor. We have uh, 8 million people ever growing, so perhaps in a few years, it will be 10 million people living in Gulf. So you have to keep it stable because, I mean, we have done one evacuation, the world's largest evacuation from Kuwait in 1990. You don't want to repeat that exercise every time. So you can, it's a huge, uh, it causes enormous uh, uh, grief to people who have to go through this. Number one. Number two, uh, more than half of our oil comes from the Gulf countries. Abhi, chodhi, abhi Russia se aara, but this is just an aberration. It uh, is good as long as it lasts, you know, which is not going to last forever. Uh, and about 80-85% of your gas comes from uh, Gulf. And at least $50 billion in terms of remittances. And now huge amounts of investments. So those investments are not direct investments. Uh, they are not direct, but they are financial investments, huge. So, uh, the Gulf, we have huge stakes in the Gulf country. And the Gulf countries know we are a non interfering country. We, uh, we, we, we are not out to take them or to extract the oil or things like those or occupy them. So, there's a growing trust 
because they know we will be the major stabilizing factor in that region. And you see this transformation of relationship with the Gulf countries is as a result of that thinking, both in the Gulf countries and in India. That we have to work very closely together to keep Gulf stable, uh, not at loggerheads with each other, at least not getting into wars, and, and remaining uh, peaceful and, and at least uh, have some kind of modus vivendi with each other's neighbors rather than you know, getting into fights, like the Iran Iraq war or things like or, or the Iraq Kuwait war. So, uh, and I think this is at the root of the changes and transformation that you see in our relationship with the Gulf. They see us emerging, they see us having a, 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 that we would have that capability to keep it stable. We will have the means and the reasons to keep it stable. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Africa, uh, I think this is a huge untapped potential there for us, and uh, we are well situated to exploit it. Uh, it has huge natural resources, enormous natural. I mean, imagine a country, a continent which is five times size of India, seven times size of India, with a population less than India. You know, the largest rivers is full of water. It's full of natural resources, decent people. But it's we just have to. Uh, work harder to build this relationship with them, which is mutually beneficial. And that's why we are focusing on. So we're very non-intrusive in our relationship with Africa. Uh, we are helping them where they need our help. Uh, we have far uh, greater presence on the Eastern seaboard than you can see in practically every country or in that region, uh, the large Indian community. And now, of course, all the Western side also. Uh, our, we have large invest, investments in uh, in uh, Africa. And in the last few years, we have taken some big leaps of faith uh, through the India-Africa uh, Forum summits. Uh, and uh, we already offered $10 billion of lines of credit. We're helping them in capacity building, etc. Uh, so uh, you see a lot happening between India and Africa. It needs a lot of effort on our part also. But we are now spending that uh, that uh, diplomatic energy and that financial effort uh, towards Africa. Uh, and I'm sure uh, over a period of time, we'll see a lot of good results coming up. Next slide, please. Uh, European Union uh, uh, is the single largest economic union. I don't know if it still remains, but perhaps after the shock, <laughs> after the shock is over, they might again. Though uh, my own sense now is that uh, Europe is now a fading power. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I mean, uh, it's uh, unlike US, US has a tremendous capacity of rejuvenation because they're getting a lot of migrants, some very bright migrants are going there and that ability to assimilate them there. Europe is not showing that. It is now increasingly becoming uh, insular. Uh, it somehow it has it is developing this mentality of being besieged by others. It's very strange, you know, a country which went and had colonies all over the world now doesn't like people coming from the colonies. Uh, so uh, it is facing uh, it's just demons are coming back home now to. Uh, so uh, it uh, for Europe to rejuvenate, uh, I am not so. I, I would say the jury is still open that if Europe can ever have a very important position in the world. It's a, in a sense, it is now a power which is slowly, slowly receding. Uh, and, 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 and you can see it right now. I mean, it has no capacity to stand up to US on, on Ukraine issue. And you, today the energy prices in Europe are three to five or seven times what they are. How, how do you hope to have any viable uh, industry if your energy prices go seven times? And you're dependent upon uh, US for energy. So uh, it has not shown that capacity or agency to take decisions which should purely be in its own, in its interest. Uh, it is still in uh, this Cold War mentality. So uh, so I think it's, it's all these are signs of a, uh, of a power which is decaying uh, slowly. Um, 
but for us we we have a good relationship it can still be a source of great technologies lots of investment into india because the industries now are becoming increasingly unviable uh, so and we can benefit from it and of course uh, there are a number of countries there so you get a lot of votes uh, when you seek elections or as and when uh, we need those votes uh, and by we have, we have good relationship with them they, they generally regard the indians uh, well so getting employment for indians movement etc is also good uh, that's where it is next slide please uh, east africa and pacific you know we have civilization links so from uh, if you go east uh, of india until japan you know there's a huge footprint that we have had historically world largest temple complexes was most startling temp uh, temples etc are uh, all there you know I mean, angkor wat is the largest uh, uh, temple complex in the world and you know, the, the names are still uh, indian names or linked to indian languages uh, now you know uh, twisted uh the king of thailand considers himself a avatar of vishnu and the incarnation of ram so you know it's, it's still there uh and that shows the kind of reach we had and the fact that uh people uh embraced our ideas uh, or embraced what we believed in was because of the power of our ideas buddhism was the power of an idea hinduism was in that sense it was absorbed there it was accepted there it was not taken on the tip of a sword so uh, it's time to revive it which you are trying to do there's a huge potential for trade investments and technology because very large populations across all the east asian countries uh, we had earlier we had what you call lucius now has become active policy we are deeply engaged with asean countries we did not participate in rcp because we realized it was completely it would have hurt our industries badly and we have learned now to say no earlier we would not even if the treaty was not to our great advantage we would say yes because we didn't uh, want to upset others now now we are we are a different country now we, if we don't like something we we'll simply say no but no no thank you but we can't do it so but it, this relationship will remain very important for us uh, for the reasons i've already explained and the fact that china is right in the center of east asia next slide please quad because this is uh, in a way flavor of the season and will continue to remain so uh, it's an informal grouping uh, of australia india japan and us set up in 2007 uh, in parallel there were also malabar naval exercises they were not linked uh, after chinese protests in 2008 you know it went into limbo we also pulled our hand a little we also played it slowly so did australia so it just remained in name uh, but post 2020 you see as it became very clear to us that china will have to be seriously contained on one side and it became very clear to us that uh, we will have to deal with an uh, increasingly more aggressive and assertive china uh, so called became a mechanism uh, so far it's, it's not a treaty organization it's not a military alliance but uh, but it is <coughs> the beginning of uh, of of some kind of a coalition and how it moves will depend upon how china also reacts and how china deals with it and how china behaves more importantly uh, so australia also uh, was a spoil sport earlier but in 2020 joined the malabar exercises uh, there was the first summit during uh, with president biden joining in 2021 uh, so it's it's a complexity because each of the quad members has very very huge economic uh, engagement with china in terms of investments and trade and uh, yet they all worry of china so it, it's a complex thing because because of this huge uh, interdependence is not easy to break away which was possible during the cold war in the first, uh, between america and russia because there was not huge trade no movement of people no huge trade so it was very easy to to deal with that adversarial relationship because there was not much at stake except peace 
Right now, it's not just peace, it's economy. So uh, it's far more complex. And this complexity will continue uh, as we go forward. So as I said, you'll see um, things hotting up, but not going beyond a point. And uh, that's how it's going to be uh, as all, all the sides start navigating these uh, choppy waters. Next slide, please. United Nations, you know, you all familiar with it. We are now the Security Council member till December. We are the founding members of UN. We're not a permanent member. We have the aspirations. I don't think it's going to happen easily uh, that uh, we'll get the permanent membership, no matter what people keep saying that we want India, we want India, but it's just not going to happen. The discussions have been going on uh, for God knows how many years. Uh, this was an old discussion when I was uh, uh, an Indian representative uh, to the United Nations in, uh, from between 1999 to 2002. So, uh, 22, 23 years back. Tab lag raha tha, it was just discussion. Now it has become a text-based uh, negotiation, but it's not going to go anywhere easily. That's my sense of it. And I don't think we must spend too much of political capital. We should not give up. We must continue to keep the pot boiling. But uh, we should not spend too much of political uh, or diplomatic uh, capital on this. But keep the pot boiling because if you don't try, it's not going to happen. But right now, I don't think circumstances are such that's going to happen. Uh, China uh, would certainly not want India and Japan to do that. Simply put. Uh, next slide, please. Diaspora, it is, uh, it is, you know, uh, earlier, uh, uh, not your generation, but I'm talking my generation. Uh, we had a very complex relationship with our diaspora. Diaspora thought, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing, so don't think that, you know, don't say my uncle never felt that way, or my aunt never felt that way. Okay, I'm just generalizing. They thought that we were no do gooders. We made a mess of the country. And we thought these guys who got educated at the public at cost, mainly they went from IITs or doctors, etc. So it's a very a complex relationship, you know, which we can see in our own families also, somebody doing very well, other not, and then it becomes like, you know, uh, sniping at each other, and not not breaking away, but, you know, this, uh, this uh, inbuilt, so uh, it's, it's now completely changed. I, I, I've seen it. So, you know, I've, I joined the Foreign Service in 83 when this was the governing thought case of, and those guys will see we are no do uh, So uh, now it's completely changed. Uh, we rejoice in their success, we celebrate their success, and we genuinely celebrate their success. And they get a lot of tailwinds uh, with the way India is progressing. I mean, today, India is in a way uh, uh, one of the rising stars, and everybody knows it, everybody believes it. So they also get a lot of uh, heft by saying, I'm India safe. And even within the companies they work for, they get this value that you can open doors in India. So it's, it's, it's a very transformed relationship of mutual respect, of mutual desire to work and uh, uh, enhance each other. So uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good spot we find ourselves in. And I think we just need to continue to uh, continue to um, reinforce this. So we have found various mechanisms. First, it was Pravasi Bharti uh, Divas, where Pravasi Bharti Sammans were given. Then we realized that was not enough. So we started regional Pravasi Bharti Divas. So, you know, rope in more countries and, you know, each, even the small communities of Indians there should feel uh, involved and should feel uh, um, uh, included in this engagement. Then we had this first uh, parliamentaries of uh, Indian origin uh, conference where there's so many of them. And now we have uh, a few heads of states and heads of government. And the head of uh, state and head of government of Mauritius, now UK, uh, Ireland, Portugal at one point of time, I don't know if it's still there. Um, and uh, of course, uh, Trinidad, Tobago, Vienna, you know, name them, it's happening. It's all around us, you know. But because it's happening while we are growing, we just don't realize that. Look at it. Look at the, the which of the country can say so many heads of the state and government actually came from our bosom. It's amazing. And, and, and more will happen as you go along. Who knows some, I mean, in your memories, in your life, perhaps in my life, we were president of the United States coming from India. We already have vice president. 
And should something happen to president of America? <laughs> we'll have Indian as a person of Indian origin as president of America. Who could have thought of it earlier? It's happening. And so it's important to really reinforce this relationship. And it's so it's now a very healthy relationship uh, where both sides uh, rejoice in each other and support each other. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yep, this is the last slide. And this is the conclusion. So, uh, so in summing up, India's prestige is rising as, it is, as its reach is rising. Relations with neighbors is a mixed bag. Pakistan, China axis is working hard to stymie us in our neighborhood. Relations with the US and some other major powers in East Asia who, threaten, who feel threatened with China is growing. Relations with the Gulf countries witnessing significant development. I think this is something very, very important. I think because our newspapers write only of US and you know, UK and you know, we somehow we still have, uh, mines have been colonized, so we need to think of them. But the, the Gulf countries is a phenomenal relationship and it really needs to be uh, to be uh, celebrated and we really need to work further because they're, they're sitting on huge pots of gold in, as it were. I mean, look at the uh, reserves they have between Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Qatar, uh, Bahrain, of course, is small and Oman is not as rich in terms of uh, natural resources. But you're looking at about four to five trillion dollars, maybe more, of, of state wealth and then individual wealth. And it's, uh, so five trillion dollars is 10 times your foreign exchange reserves today of 520 billion dollars. See it like this. I mean, your capital shortages can be met purely with the Gulf. You don't need anybody else. Just for a development, you need a lot of capital. Uh, so, and then uh, relations with US, Russia will require delicate handling because, I mean, look at trade, there's hardly any trade, et cetera, defense dependency is there. But, uh, and here we have huge equities with the US. So we'll have to balance it very delicately. And the US-China relations will also have implications on us. We've discussed this with that. Thank you very much. And now let's, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer this. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Yogesh. Uh, sir, I've already asked one. If someone has one before me, they can go. I can maybe ask later, or if someone, as in, if there's no one, then I wanted to ask. Sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, I, I'd, I'd rather have Manpreet ask first because. Okay, I've already... okay, Manpreet, please go ahead. Yogesh is very nice and very, very uh, perfect gentleman. You know. Thank you, Yogesh. And uh, uh, sir, my question is regarding uh, India-China relations. Mm -hmm. uh, you have mentioned about the complex relationship that, that we have had. So, uh, with the change of uh, uh, the army chief in Pakistan, mm -hmm. and the way uh, China uh, Pakistan is going, so how do we see that uh, uh, Pakistan's future perception would be? Would be, uh, or uh, what does Pakistan want uh, of, uh, in foreign policy? Well, this is the problem. Pakistan doesn't know what it wants, except not taking Kashmir, which it knows is not going to happen. So it doesn't know what it wants, and and partly it, uh, as I said, partly it comes because you see it had this uh, belief that uh, in the sixties, which, which seems to be still hanging over, that it could take on India militarily. So despite 71 defeat, despite what happened in Kargil, uh, despite in 99, they somehow haven't woken up to it. And uh, now they have, uh, which is a, which is self-created uh, belief that India is out to break them. So Bangladesh broke, uh, broke out because of what Pakistan did, not what we did. They might have helped it, but what, what else would they expect us to do when you have 10 million refugees in a country uh, in 71, I mean, we were a very poor economy. As I said, you guys are not born, but in the 60s, we were, we were just waiting for the PL40 ka wheat lake a ship dock karta hai, to kuch khana mil jai. And, you know, when your prime minister, uh, and I'm talking of Shastri ji, uh, he started fasting every Tuesday. 
to save food. I mean, you guys, you you guys weren't born in that India, but that was harsh reality which I have seen. That you know, the prime minister goes on a fast to make example and set example for the country. That we eat very little, eat a little less. Today, nobody tells you not to eat less. You know, but the problem is the parents saying, "I eat so much, I'm not going to get sick." Okay, na, I'm not going to get sick. So it's a very different India where you guys have been born. So Pakistan somehow. There's only glue, as I said, which keeps uh, the uh, the four very disparate groups of people in Pakistan: the Sindhis, the Punjabis, the Baluchis, and the uh, Pathans. So they don't like each other. The only way to keep them together is fear of India. So they have to constantly fan this fear of India. And fact of the matter is that the Pathans in Pakistan are not very comfortable with Pakistan. and that is why afghanistan even even the taliban rule when it was so dependent upon pakistan never accepted drone land as the uh, or never recognized drone land as the border between pakistan and uh, afghanistan because they say wo to pakistan hai to pathan to sab pakistan ke what what are they doing in pakistan and what is that they are doing in pakistan so pakistan is a mortal fear of breaking out of breaking because they are four very disparate people uh, just Kept together, the fear of India, and now army uh, and the fear of army basically, and army wants because it lives on the fat of the land. They just constantly want to create this fear, but that's the only way you can get uh, new toys and you can uh, you know you can dominate all sectors of the economy and uh, enrich yourself. And there was a recent uh, uh, news circulating that uh, uh, General Bajwa is worth a few billion dollars, or uh, at least a, easily a billionaire. so that's that's the situation in pakistan how i answered the question is there anything pending on your question uh, sir uh, as you have uh, mentioned about the manufactured uh, crisis uh, in india from the uh, uh, mr imran khan has also alleged uh, us of interfering in uh, the politics of pakistan so can we draw some parallels between these two happenings no no there are no parallels you know uh, mr imran khan is using it perhaps as a election stunt okay i don't know about it maybe he felt that and maybe see mr imran khan has a major problem uh, he has uh, enormous self belief okay uh, and believe that he knows everything uh, sadly its reality is very different and uh, he can't digest that that's the reality of the situation he is a good leader a political leader makes a lot of noises and touches people's uh, uh, raw nerves to you know uh, create crises but he has not been able to lead his country well look at the economic situation is they find themselves in and for us and why are we concerned about him he is absolutely hostile towards india so if he suffers just as well you know i mean deserves it we don't have to shed tears for it Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, any uh, any other questions? Archita wants to ask Yogesh. And then Rohan, and then Yogesh. Uh, Yogesh wants to be, have the last word, so he's holding his horses. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Rohan, please go ahead. Who else? Uh, sir, uh, in the beginning, uh, we saw that. Uh, due to ambiguity in us foreign policies there are complications for india so my question was regarding this term that st strategic ambiguity that we see in foreign relations that uh, how much of it is importance for india to assert itself uh, as well as maintain uh, strategic ambiguities in different things and uh, also from the perspective of us and other uh, partners maintaining this ambiguity in their relations so you know it's like this <coughs> we were always concerned about uh, us naraz ho jayega theek hai na so let's be worried about it uh, as you grow and as you as you know as i said once you learn how to play the game and you have uh, a strong backbone and a reasonably decent economy and and self belief you deal with the other party differently 
Right. Now, sadly, U.S. is not used at all to what it considers as allies or friends, uh, telling it as it were. And look at Europe, you know. Not one voice saying, kya, bas karo, kya kar rahe ho? I mean, we may freeze, we have, you have increased our electricity prices for five to seven times. You completely, uh, our economy, our industries are going into uh, serious difficulties. Not one voice. Now it's used to that kind of friends. So what are our subservient friends? Okay, who jo adesh lete hain, pretension friend ka equality ka basically adesh lete hain. They thought they will uh, they will have a similar relationship with us. Now we have to set the ground rules very clearly. And this is not how it will work now. Okay, uh, and so when you do this. It comes as a shock to the other guy. Just see it like this: when you, 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 if you are in a classroom, your teacher tells you listen quietly every day. Even if he tells you something which you may not agree with, one day you decide that it's too much. And he tells you, you just tell him, "Bas karo, ya, kya ho gaya? Sab aap jante nahi ho." He just taken a back, you know. And then it doesn't know how to react. So it might get angry, then realize the anger still can't be chal raha hai, then it will soften, it will again try anger. You know, that's, as I said, it's the game of smokes and mirrors. So we are not, it is now our effort to change this dialogue with the US. The, as it were, the rules of how we'll engage with each other. And it cannot be that they're telling us, and more so publicly, don't buy Russian oil. Who are you to tell us? Ali would listen, maybe we'll accommodate. Now we said, yeah, okay, okay. You don't buy it, you don't buy it. You don't buy it. Now they were not used to it. They were not used to the response from uh, any of, anybody, uh, any of their friends or allies. It's happening now. The Saudis have told them when they wanted uh, oil production to increase, Saudis told them, there's nothing oil production increase. They never expected that from Saudi Arabia. So it's happening now. They will have to adjust to it. And till this happens, there will be turbulence. You can see it in the house. You have to get angry at the child. 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 You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. I mean, you have to get angry at the child. You have to get angry at the child. You get confused. Because there's a certain pattern you're used to. All of a sudden, somebody changes their pattern. This is, that. This is what we're trying to do. To change this pattern of relationship, that it has to be, if not full equality, it has to be near equality. You have to take our concerns into account, and we'll have to take uh, we'll take your concerns into account. And when there are disagreements, well, you will have to learn to live with our decisions as much as we we'll learn to live with your decisions. Okay. So, turbulence time It's not we go because you assertiveness has to be with uh, not just a strong backbone, but a strong economy. And a very strong government. strong government So uh, there's a lot of things happening. Some of it are not interpreted the way I'm interpreting it. I could be wrong, I'm not saying. Because this is my interpretation of how I see things. Anyway, uh, have I answered your question? Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Achita, since uh, Yogesh wants to have the last word. Yes, sir. Achita, please go ahead. Can you see on the screen, please? Sir, yes. Just one minute. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it could be cyborg talking to somebody. You know, huh? uh, sir, since a long time, I've been observing that India has been ranked as a country of particular concern uh, as per United States Commission of International Religious Freedom. So, um, and also, sir, with respect to US relationship, uh, there are some strains with respect to human rights violations and everything. So, sir, what are your thoughts or views about this? Look, you know, US, US has, uh, there are two things to it. When it's convenient to US, then these human rights don't matter. To them, or uh, it, it, they don't care about it. Okay. If they're so concerned about human rights, why are they trading with China? 
as the biggest trading partner. Okay, it suits them. They do it, and they make noises to uh, uh, to first tell the domestic constituency because uh, Democrats are more uh, support all these causes more than the Republicans do. So uh, to say, we are trying. We have told India or China. We just go say. We have told them all that. And secondly, to use it as a tool to beat you with. So this is a very low cost exercise. They report one day, you take that report, you take it. Uh, your media is in control, you publicize it, publicize it, publicize it, and then you soften the other country. I said, the question is softening the other country and get more concessions out of it. We, we, we understand the game, so we are not particularly concerned about it. They want to say, they can say, we, uh, as uh, we also know what's happening in their country, and uh, I think they have a lot to explain uh, of, uh, for what they did to their Native Americans. Uh, or, or for that matter, what they did to Japanese, who were all interned in the Second World War. Both for and for Jite. And how do you, how do, how do you treat the entire nationality as anti, anti country? Kya tha unlo? Now, abhi karte hai, roji karte hai, Guantanamo be kya hai kar? Theek hai na? And all these drone strikes, and you say collateral damage ho gaya, theek hai na? So they all they do it, except that they, uh, because, as I said, because they were used to others listening to it. Now they're finding it a little difficult when some of us tell them, okay, enough is enough now. So it'll take a little while. They use basically to first uh, to uh, feed the domestic constituency that they're very active on these fronts. It looks very nice. And uh, secondly, to browbeat uh, countries into, uh, into whatever they would want them to do. And that's how we should see it. And I'm not supporting at all that uh, we should not look after our people or we should not have religious... Uh, um, uh, accommodation, or that we should not live with each other as as um, just children of India. I'm not at all. We, we should. I mean, that goes without saying. But we don't need others to come and tell us that. It should. We should be something which you know it uh, in our bones that is important for us to do it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have I answered your question? Yes. Sir. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, Preeti, go ahead, please. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you so much for this session, firstly. Uh, so my question, it's a very generic one, but also in the context of Russia-Ukraine war, one of the questions that's often raised is, how can we balance between values and interests? And can there, can there be a prioritization between the two? So, so what could be a balanced response to concerns like this? Okay, you know, Okay, for example, let, let's say we decide that what Russia has done is completely wrong. Okay, and uh, I would not say that because the answer is far more complex. Okay, and uh, uh, let me uh, just uh, without trivializing it, and please don't take it otherwise. Somebody keeps bothering you every day. You are going to the shop, you are getting irritated, you are doing this, you are doing that. Okay, uh, you won't allow you to go to college or wherever or shopping easily, you know, taunts, yeah, open. And one day you take a stick and say, okay, we, the pass I to laga diya apne. And they say, dekhiye to mar diya na namko. Would you take it as mar diya mein usko? No, sir. Huh? You, you say, dekho bhai, aap tumko saal bar se pareisha nita pere. College aate hain, to city mar te ho, yeh karte ho, wo karte ho, kabhi taunt kaste ho, kabhi kuch karte ho. What were you expecting? Right. And would you like if we then told you that you have to do something, 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 you have to do So, this asset that story is far more complex. There was a tacit understanding that NATO would not be expanded. And the original 14, 15 countries, Joe with Yosu, were hanging. It's now become almost 30 countries. This is understanding the aesthetic of the environment. And now you want to take Ukraine also. And you see, if you take, you can also become a member of NATO. So Russia ka warm water access to Kali Black Sea se hai. And NATO sitting there. And look, you know, I mean, any serious country would not allow that to happen. Which who would allow it? Why did Americans jump uh, so so agitatedly when Russians? Uh, I'm talking of Soviet Union. Time 62 May, 
मिसाइल्स टू क्यूबा तो क्यूबा सोवरेन कंट्री है रशिया सोवरेन कंट्री था आपस में तय हो गया दे दिया आप क्यों परेशान हो गए बिकॉज सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न ओके यू कान से आई हैव सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न बट यू डोंट सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न That was agreed, and and there was a mince agreement. They found they were trying to find motors in Vandy. That's right. So Russia was provoked into doing it. Now, whether they should then then it or not is a matter of open debate. For their belief that if the line is broken, it's all problem will be. How they fought the war is a different issue, and I think they have, they have, they have a good time messed it up. Okay, but that's a different issue. But the, I'm talking reaction. Whether what they did has succeeded or not is another issue, and that's a question of a uh, 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 different kind of skill set. So, strategic thinking, yeah, say, unka jo reaction tha, wo understandable. Right. Usko implement karna jo kya, I mean, it looks like complete disaster. Okay, but that's the implementation part. Right. They didn't have the tools. They didn't. Uh, they were not. There was a type of lack clarity of what were the strategic objectives or how to achieve that. But that's a different story. so we can sit in judgment on that i mean nobody will care about it right aaj hamari sthiti hoti hai hum kya karte hain so it's then ultimately, ultimately 71 war mein bangladesh pe hum kya hum gaye to hum pe burden aa raha becoming a problem for us pakistan hum pe pakistan the western side pe hamla kiya tha hum pe with but, but then because they had no the choice they couldn't have fought us in east so they, they thought they'll put pressure on us on the western side to reduce pressure on the west it didn't work out like in Russia, russia's case the military gambit doesn't seem to have worked out so far to uh, ye russia was in that sense provoked into it and why we can conjecture I mean, this metro can as said it's all uh, interpretation of this that the americans and hum kahe kaani a deep state they exactly kya chahte hain maybe they just want to remove each obstacle or each country which may support earlier russia now russia and china and perhaps eventually only china was they taken care of russia so they see it very differently because they as i said they see it kyunki number one position kaisa threaten ho sakti hai something that they have maintained for last 100 years okay so now they see threats coming from china now how do we can china and how do you prevent some day of china from taking over the huge russian land patrol in the siberia with the hardly any russian population so the 100 things are this is very complex uh, so russia has uh, had it was not without reason whether they should have they should not have and how they should have was a different issue each one each of us can have a view तो अब उनको कंडेम आप क्यों एंड व्हाई वुड वी कंडेम देम वी हैव फ्रेंडशिप विद देम अगर आपको कल स्पेयर पार्ट चाहिए इफ इफ यू गोइंग टू बैटल विद पाकिस्तान और चाइना मैं कैन सुनिए देगा मैं क्या स्पेयर पार्ट दे डोंट हैव सो कोई के मी सीज हेलीकॉप्टर्स योर सबमरीन्स एंड टाइप प्लेटफॉर्म्स योर टैंक्स ठीक है ना तो कोई एज सेड फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट द पर्पस ऑफ फॉरेन पॉलिसी इज टू सिक्योर नेशनल इंटरेस्ट ऑन peace which had said the four five things and on uh, prosperity and uh, development and while doing that as much as you can manage other principles you manage it hai na ab main aap se puch raha hu maan lo koi aapke ghar mein daku bandook leke aa jaye puche aapka chabi kahan hai to aap sach bolenge ki nahi sach bolna bahut acha hota hai isliye ha ya ahinsawadi bani rahenge aap ghar mein bandook bhi hai to aap thodi ahinsawadi rahenge fir nahi rahenge na तो फिर वो अहिंसा का प्रिंसिपल तो खत्म हो जाएगा और सच का प्रिंसिपल भी खत्म हो जाएगा बट इन जनरल ऑल ऑफ़ बिलीव दैट वी शुड बी ट्रूथफुल एंड वी शुड बी नॉन वायलेंट सरकमस्टांसेस वारंटेड डिफरेंटली देन यू रिएक्ट टू इट डिफरेंटली या मिसेस स्वामीनाथ हां स्वामीनाथ आप हां जी सर एम आई ऑडिबल सो या या बोथ यू विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल Good evening, sir. Uh, and you're very. Sir, my question is really. Thank you, sir. 
sir my question is related to the importance of g20 presidency of india mm -hmm. like uh, recently in the, it have came in the uh, context of like when we are celebrating that uh, 75th year of amrit kaal so do you see that india's strategic role in that and how do you see like uh, the changing concerns of inflation and geopolitical dynamism uh, in the uh, multilateral forum like do you see that it has a significant uh, role in that future outlook of india as a strategic leader yeah, one second i didn't uh, i just break your question into two three parts because uh, you link too many issues which will be very difficult to like uh, how how like this one presidency one is on g20 one is on g20 one is on g20 now what yes, is the question exactly what is your question like how this like multi for a uh, multilateral forum can be used for like future outlook of india to be like a, a strategic role for like other multilateral issues on geo geopolitics okay fine so this is one part then what is the next one this is the only question you have or the so moment? this is the zone yes, okay. yes so yes. let me answer that yes sir you see it's like this uh you don't understand the origins of g20 and uh, it uh, yes, really yes. came into being uh, at the 2008 economic crisis so it was primarily an a grouping of largest economies so not the largest militaries are there not nuclear powers are there the largest economies of the world are present there idea was that after the 2008 shock how do you stabilize through cooperation and through consultations because uh, like in the case of covid for example just giving you an example just one country can't go it alone ठीक है ना हम सोचे हमारा देश सिक्योर होगा पाकिस्तान में कोविड है तो हमारा आएगा ही आएगा ठीक है ना या नेपाल में बांग्लादेश में तो आएगा यू कान वो कोविड तो नहीं पूछता ना बॉर्डर का है ना वो वीजा लेता ना पासपोर्ट लेता है ठीक है सो सेम थिंग वाज द द इकोनॉमिक कंटेजियन इट हैड टू ऑल कंट्रीज हैड टू वर्क इन कंसर्ट टू बी एबल टू प्रिवेंट द इकोनॉमी फ्रॉम कलैप्सिंग और हैविंग सीरियस रिसेशन दैट्स हाउ जी20 का मेन रोल वो था that again becomes important today uh, because after the covid and after now this ukraine thing a uh, lot of countries are in serious difficulty economic difficulty and look look around yourself pakistan is in deep trouble bangladesh sri lanka is in deep trouble bangladesh is in deep trouble nepal to chalo bhi to pe trade se thoda but they are, they are facing serious difficulties we have so far managed Uh, not to be in that situation hopefully we will not but uh, but that's that was the purpose of g20 so today g20 becomes very important and it also becomes even more important as a consulting forum because uh, west is at logger heads with uh, russia directly because of uh, what's happening in ukraine and indirectly with china to contain china and to prevent it from becoming as a number one so so we will have to do this And, and and so g20 is an important forum to see if some sense of reasonableness can be prevailed so that lot of countries have have no control over how will behave and they become the victims of it and, and africa is a prime example i mean some of our neighboring countries have uh, fell into these difficult times over which they have no control they didn't create it they have no control over it. G20 becomes a forum to to bring some sense of uh, wisdom and some sense of uh, mutual coexistence. Find some modus vivendi for it, so the economies globally don't go into tailspin. Because eventually everybody will get hurt, some more, some less. That is the purpose. Now, what happens is beyond this, there is a formal organization called UN. Uh, with security council at its at its center which is no, a, a non in a way non representative body i mean three members of the five, the five permanent members are europeans they all think alike talk like europeans and uh, european origin countries like us okay they don't represent i mean uh, uk is an economy smaller than ours so is france why should they be there Now why shouldn't we be there, or for that matter, Brazil be there, or uh, somebody from Africa for that matter, who can actually truly represent Africa, not just themselves? But we are a very clear case for being there. So 
till this doesn't happen our say has to be heard somewhere because we we carry certain heft in another three years will be or four years will be the world's third largest economy you can't keep them out you can't not listen to us because uh, because we will have to be a part of any problem solution without us the solutions will be incomplete or perhaps unimplementable so you create another forum since you can't reform the us or don't uh, un or don't want to reform it as a combination of both some can't who want it and uh, some who can are not willing to do it so you create another forums where countries like ours or the large economies can find solutions to major problems of the world क्योंकि बिना सुनवाई के बिना हमको सुने हुए या हमारे को एंगेज किए हुए या हमारे बिना हमारे सपोर्ट के सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट गेट सॉल्व नाउ जी फॉर्म सो जी ट्वेंटी बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ इज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ हाउ इज एंड हाउ अदर्स प्ले बॉल ऑन दिस द शेड ऑफ यूक्रेन विल रिमेन बिकॉज एज लॉन्ग एज रशिया इज कैप लाइक ए पराया एंड चाइना इज ऑल्सो बॉक्स इन दिल बी प्रॉब्लम सो वील हैव टू फाइंड सोल्यूशन सो वील टू फाइंड build those modus vivendi where at least we can have serious conversation and uh, find uh, uh, more common ground as it were to solve some of the problems if not all the problems this answer your question now sir but uh, regarding indian presidency do you see it like rhetoric or like it has significant in the india's role no it it is significant you see it's a question of eventually when you finding common solutions people have to be on board on that which means yes, it's your it's your it's your uh, ability or diplomatic skills to create that common ground where people can say ha chalo ye to problem ko solve kar lete hain baaki chhod do bhi ukraine and russia theek hai chal raha hai wo jaise bhi chalna chahe chalega no lying solutions but as it is but at least let's let's find solution to these problems okay theek hai na so uh, yes. uh, so is it a perfect uh, solution answer is no but then perfect solution don't exist so you have to deal with the uh, 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 reasonable amount of imperfect solutions and some solution is better than no solution and some cooperation is better than no cooperation hai na yes okay uh, achita please Um, so my question is regarding the Russian war only, which we were discussing before this. Um, so even till now, so we see that the war is still continuing. There are missiles that are uh, dropped on Ukraine, and uh, but we see no country like taking any tangible step towards ending the war or like offering mediation. Even like for example, so if, even if uh, India is purchasing oil from Russia. so even if it's doing its own national interest but we still see uh, that india has always been a torch bearer of um, of peace and uh, so but we uh, like at least like we, not any tangible step is being seen so is uh, this is a, uh, my stance is contrary to the stance that is being taken by india uh, but uh, is it right sir uh, even till now because uh, because I don't know. I I don't see any end to the war, at least in the near future. So, okay, first of all, we didn't we didn't cause this war. We didn't provoke this war. Number one. Uh, number two, for war to end, hmm. uh, the two sides should want it. Na, as I said, Mia Bibi Raji, so what will happen? Raji, Mia Bibi, both are Raji, not. So what will happen? Okay, both want to fight. So what can you do? What can you do? as as the same you you can't prevent fool from follies so you, you can give good advice but people should want to listen to it number one and number two people must want your intermediation hai na ye to wo apna hindi mein na begani shaadi mat dula diwana theek hai na to abhi wo jab ladna nahi chahte wo ladna chahte hain to aap kya kare so uh, they have to they have to want peace then our role comes in to find common ground you know to to say, take steps start with baby steps and then say chalo isko aise karo aise karo ek se baat ki dusre se baat ki madhyastha dhoonda because each will start with maximalist position right so then then that's where you but they must want peace the question do they want peace 
and number two, do they want the intermediation? Hai na? So answer to both is not clear today. Uh, it's not clear to me if both sides want peace. They may want peace, but on their terms, at the minimum. So it's not going to happen. So till they get tired of fighting, or till the cost of fighting the war becomes so difficult, for example, for Europe maybe, if it continues till next winter, and Europeans just get tired of paying eight times for electricity, and the bank comes, the governments go bankrupt subsidizing it. So governments can't endlessly subsidize it. And the economy that, and the industries are closing because at five or six times the cost of energy, they become unsustainable. A lot of industries will become unsustainable. So, ab, wo, till those things happen, or till the American uh, people become tired of this war, as they became tired of Vietnam war, and then they became tired of Iraq war, and they became tired of Afghanistan war, they simply say, how much money will we put To save what? Ukraine, I mean, how, does, how much does it matter to us? So it, it has to reach that point. I don't think it has reached that point. So, so let them figure it out. And then if they say, Haan, aap, you become the honest broker. Uh, wo Russians will listen to us, Americans will listen to us, Russians will listen to us. Ab aap madhyasta kar di. Until then you keep trying and, and keep giving uh, sage advice, kya, diplomacy is a kaam karlo, lalai chhoke, lalai kar, kya hasil karlo. So that's what we are saying right now. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question? So, uh, yeah, Piyogesh. Uh, so, uh, it was just a very practical interview related question. So, uh, they routinely mm -hmm. ask uh, in the transcripts and in mock interviews likewise, what are the three areas in which you would like to see a foreign policy get better or what are the three things that you would do differently? Now, sir, I've tried really hard uh, thinking about this, sir, but maybe I'm not smart enough, but I literally cannot uh, think beyond one, sir. Uh, like, what is the one? Uh, yeah, sir, at least you can think of one now. Huh? Sir, it's that we should have a uh, we should have a, a, a very sorted uh, evacuation policy, so that the time of evacuation of people overseas does not become a matter of political uh, uh, game, sir. So whether we when we decide to evacuate people out of Ukraine is not a part of a political game that Ukraine and Russia are playing with us sir, or we are playing with them. So we have like a defined policy. No, uh, so you see, you're talking of a defined policy in some other country, which is not going to happen. See, what is your, you can define anything you want sitting in Delhi. Okay. If, if Russians would not have allowed over flights. Okay. And the Ukrainians would have said, Kevi, you welcome nahi hai. What can you do? Are you going to wage war there? First of all, by, by definition, these evacuations happen uh, when a serious crisis occurs. Some of these crises, you can't see it happening. First of all, I said there's ambiguity about how others will react to certain situations. So uh, you can't. Number two, and there's a harsh reality of life of India, uh, of Indians abroad, and that's, uh, that's a harsh reality, that many of them will not want to leave. Oh, पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं बच्चे वो अब तीन साल खराब कर चुका है वो डॉक्टर बनने के लिए या इंजीनियर बनने के लिए उसको बोलो देखो बेटा लड़ाई हो सकती है तो अब घर चलो अब ही नोज लड़ाई नहीं मान लो 6 महीने बैठा रहता मैं तो डिग्री चली जाएगी एडमिशन चला जाएगा सो दिस इज द हार्श रियलिटी सी द काइंड ऑफ पीपल देयर यूक्रेन में कौन गया था बच्चे गए थे पढ़ने के लिए फिर कुछ मां-बाप चले गए फिर कुछ बिजनेस शुरू हो गए बट मेनली इट वाज अ इंडियन Students who went there first, and and then followed others. You know, this is restaurant khol liya, this is their personal with dukan khol li, this is their doctors practice karna shuru kar diye. Jab language seekh liye, that's how it began. Now, ab apna se apne aap se sawal puchhe hiye. Agar aapka beta jo seeram pad raha ho, thoda nasal infected hai ye wo, to aap kya usko immediately bola lenge? The first sign ke. और बचाना भी चाहेगा क्या बोलेगा मैं तीन साल खराब कर दिए आप अब डिग्री आने वाली है साल भर में लड़ाई का पक्का नहीं है होगी नहीं होगी होगी तो किस हद तक होगी है ना तो ये तो सो इवैक्यूएशन के यू कैन ऑल ऑल यू कैन प्रिपेयर फॉर इवैक्यूएशन इज 
वी कैन हैव अ गेम प्लान विच ऑल मिशन है हमें क्या क्या करना पड़ेगा गाड़ियां हायर करनी पड़ेंगी रास्ते ढूंढने पड़ेंगे बाहर निकले क्या क्या ऑल्टरनेटिव है फ्लाइट का कहा से हम सड़कों से ले आ सकते हैं ठीक है ना कैसे वो आप कर लीजिए बट उसकी एक्सरसाइज नहीं कर सकते हैं वो किसी और मुल्क में है वन डे वी कॉन्सिम चलो हजार इंडियंस को ट्राई करके देखते हैं वेट करना है ना सपोज अमेरिकन वॉट टू डू इट हियर वुड यू लाइक इट क्या तुम स्केल मॉगलिंग कर रहे हो हिंदुस्तान में कुछ होने वाला है दुनिया में शायद ही कोई कंट्री कह सकता है उन्होंने किया जिस जिस एक्सटेंट तक एंड जिस कॉस्ट पे हमने इवेक्ट किया किसी ने नहीं किया you know i don't know if you know about it when the canadians were evacuated from lebanon long back unko sab ko paisa dena pada check dena pade unko humne kisi se paisa nahi liya sab public cost pe hua tha khana ke bandos ke ministers bhi gaye the wahan pe theek hai you can say politicized kiya ye kiya wo kiya dekhiye ab electoral democracy mein ye sab to issue rahenge each government would want to highlight what it has done if if it believes that this is this will resonate with people hai na to ta mana nahi kar sakte to that is a natural democracy uh, sorry to to uska politicize to chhod dijiye aap important thing is our capability of evacuation politicizing aap kuch nahi kar sakte domestic issue hai aap koi aap aur mai kya policy bana lenge is pe it was hai na to wo to ab don't see politics rahegi rahegi to judge us judge the foreign ministry by its ability to evacuate whether it is kuwait whether it is libya whether it is ukraine you have always done an extremely good job no, no, sir sir if i may sir sir no sir ah. totally on board that we i think ah. our, our evacuation record i think is one of the most splendid ah. i guess after united states so the question that they ask is uh, uh, so one of the th- what are the three things that you would do differently in foreign policy and sir uska matlab na kewal mere paas i guess kisi ke paas hi koi bahut acha jawab nahi hota unke paas bhi nahi hoga un aap unse kar aap bata dijiye उनसे बोले सर मैं तो अभी नया नया हूँ आप बता दीजिए आप लोग तो कोई फाइन सर्विस का होगा उसके अंदर बोर्ड में जनरल एक आध होता है बोले सर आप बता दीजिए क्या जो आपने ठीक से नहीं किया जो हमें करना पड़ा आप बताइए ना उनको नो हार्म इन बीइंग शोज योर कॉन्फिडेंस इन योर सेल्फ सो यू कैन ऑलवेज नेट प्रिक ऑन थिंग्स एंड एंड आई एम नॉट सींग दैट बी इन द फॉरन सर्विस कान डू थिंग्स बेटर सर्टनली वी कैन डू थिंग बेटर दस नो सच थिंग इन दर्ल्ड डेट यू रीच के अब इसको इम्प्रूव नहीं कर सकते ठीक है ना तेंदुलकर को भी इंप्रूव कर सकते हैं ठीक है ना वो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है बट बाय लार्ज इज वर्किंग वेल सो व्हाट आई थिंक व्हाट वी नीड टू डू इज इफ दे आस्क यू दैट 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 द द एम्बेसीज डिलीवरी मैकेनिज्म्स आई थिंक शुड नीड शुड वर्क शुड परहेप्स स्टैंड ओपन मोर इकोनॉमिक डोर्स फॉर अस दैट्स अ फेयर थिंग बिकॉज with your economy growing with your search for markets with your search for uh, raw materials but they can do a better job number one number two uh, uh, our promises and delivery me gaps hai it's a reality so it's not a uh, it is a, a factual statement when you make theek hai na so we offer so many lines of credit etc but when it comes to implementation We, and it's mainly because we will not be able to sort out our internal processes so aur main aapko bilkul tajurbe se bata raha hu and i i can now court mein retired hu aur koi not a national secret uh, i was uh, the biggest spender of aid in india uh, as as joint secretary north nepal bhutan mein sabse aaye projects the mere time pe we had done a mou for 10 hydropower projects which were like 
अबाउट टेन थाउजेंड मेगा वॉट तो टेन थाउजेंड मेगा वॉट इन टू उस पर करीब सात रुपया पर मेगा वॉट था सात करोड़ रुपया सत्तर हजार करोड़ का अंडरटेकिंग था वो एम्बिशन दैट वी है एंड सो ऑन सो फोर सो गॉन टू मीटिंग विद वेरी सीनियर पीपल इन द प्लानिंग कमीशन एंड अदर्स वेर एक्चुअली आई वॉज टोल्ड कि पी एम ने कहा उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है गवर्नमेंट ने कहा भाई को मेहनत हुई जाकर कमिटमेंट किया है तो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया कमिटमेंट है हाईएस्ट लेवल उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है हमारे पास तो पैसे नहीं सो वी हैड दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड आई डोंट थिंक वी सॉल्व इट फुल्ली मे बी वी सॉल्व इट पार्शली आई बिन आउट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट नाउ फॉर सेवन ईयर एंड आई डोंट लिव इन डेली दैट वी वुड कमेंट एंड देन फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री उससे पैसा नहीं हमारे पास था सो नाउ सो आवर our promises were way ahead of our own internal processes to implement it policies processes and number 2 our capabilities to implement it so what we need to build today is a far greater capability to implement what we have committed in time it is improved undoubtedly it is improved we have but still a lot of work needs to be done there the second thing and third thing if if uh, as i said you can improve 100 things there's nothing that you can't improve third thing would be you see as our economy grows we will there's a huge quest for new markets uh, new uh, sources for raw materials etc i think we need to do a better job there politically we are handling it well by and large politically uh, with relationship we handling it rather well but on the economic side this needs to be done uh, and so the greater engagement uh, with say business community for example in india local business communities there creating those convergences those would be the three areas where perhaps uh, i would focus no no so th- these are these are brilliant so because Yeah, I, I, no, and 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 they dovetail with what I am mentioning. Mm. That ultimately, the purpose of foreign policy is to serve to interests of India. Foreign policy is not done in vacuum. ठीक है ना? क्योंकि हमें कुछ करना है तो नहीं वो नहीं होता. BBC बे हमारा what is our agenda? Domestic agenda क्या है? भारत को और prosperous बनाना है ना? और भारत को secure करना. तो सारे action उसी तरफ directed होने चाहिए theoretically. और बायलार्ड होते भी हैं, ठीक है सर बस एक लास्ट एडवेंचर सर ये टेक्स्ट बेस नेगोशिएशन क्या होता है सर हाँ क्या चीज टेक्स्ट बेस नेगोशिएशन क्या होता है सो यू सी अर्लियर जब ये यूएन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल का एक्सपेंशन का चल रहा है चलता रहेगा जब आप मेरी उम्र के हो जाएंगे इस तरफ बैठ के ज्ञान देंगे आप तो भी आप वही बातें करेंगे कि अभी होना चाहिए दैट्स द नेचर ऑफ यू एन एंड दैट्स हाउ इट इज सो एनी तो See earlier there were only basically discussions. Thumbs up conference room. We are going. Agenda is security council. How to expand? Do we need to change? Do we need to change? First question: Do we need to change? How much 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 do we need to change? तो आके वो अपना वो कहानी बता के और फिर जब पंद्रह दिन जो चलता चलता जब घर चले जाते थे अगले साल वापस इकट्ठे करते थे वापस वही कहानी इट वॉज इन द फोर्थ कमेटी ऑफ द यू एन आई वॉज लुकिंग आउट फर्स्ट कमेटी डिस पॉलिटिकल इशू ये फोर्थ कमेटी का मुद्दा था बट वो ऑल्सो पॉलिटिकल इशू तो ये हर साल कहानी होती थी वहां पर नाउ फाइनली दे मेड ए टेक्सट क्या टेक्स में ईच लाइन को नेगोशिएट करें कितने मेंबर होने चाहिए ठीक है ना देर शुड बी मोर परमानेंट मेंबर्स एग्रीड कितने होने चाहिए किसने का दो होने चाहिए किसने का चार हर एक अपना अपना टकले लगाता है बताएगा आपको क्या होना चाहिए फिर वो एग्रीमेंट नहीं हुआ तो उनको व्हाट कॉल ब्रैकेट में डाल दिया मतलब ये फाइनल नहीं हुआ है और नेगोशिएशन जो हुई और जो एग्री हो गया वो एग्री हो गया तो एक्सपेंड होना चाहिए वो एग्री हो गया नो बडीज डिस्प्यूटिंग दैट कितने होने चाहिए उस पर डिस्प्यूट है फिर कैसे डिस्ट्रीब्यूट होगा वो एक्सपेंडेड सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल किसको मिलेगा मतलब एशिया को एक मिलेगा दो मिलेगा उस पर डिस्प्यूट है तो वो फिर ब्रैकेट में आ जाते हैं तो ये टेक्स्ट बन गया था बेस्ड ऑन वॉट एवर इनपुट देव नाउ देर नेगोशिएटिंग ऑन दिस टेक्स्ट 
सो इट लुक्स प्रोग्रेस कि साहब आप वो खाली बातों से अब एक कागज लेके बात कर रहे हैं हकीकत है कि तकरीबन वहीं के वहीं है क्योंकि जब तक ये भाई देखिए बहुत सिंपल है लेट इट वेरी सिंपली सो इट इज लाइक दिस जो परमानेंट मेंबर नहीं बन सकते हैं उनको क्या इंटरेस्ट है पांच से दस करने में कोई इंटरेस्ट है उनको पब्लिकली नहीं कहेंगे हमको क्यों जानते हैं हमसे ना हम ना आज हुएंगे तो क्या फायदा बोला होने आपको तो होना जरूरी है बिल्कुल आप तो होने चाहिए और कहने में क्या बिगड़ता मालूम होने वाला तो है नहीं ठीक है ना सो so, और जो है जो है उनको क्या इंटरेस्ट अपनी पावर को डायल्यूट करने में ठीक है ना तो ये बेसिकली तो आठ दस कंट्री है जो ख्वाब देख रहे हैं या जो उनको ये इच्छा है वो उसको पुश कर रहे हैं और कुछ लोग जो जेनुअली इंटरेस्टेड है कि कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया देर लॉट ऑफ पीपल एक्चुअली बिलीव वी शुड बी देर ऐसा नहीं कि नहीं तो जो हमको कहते हैं सपोर्ट करते हैं वो चाहते हैं लेकिन वो हमारे अलावा औरों को शायद नहीं चाहेंगे या किया सो वी एंजॉय ग्रेट रेस्पेक्ट इन द यू एन आई लिव देर फॉर थ्री ईयर्स आई एम टेलिंग यू ऑल सियरली हम तीन साल में जब मैं वहां था हमने एक इलेक्शन नहीं आ रहा था वी रेयरली लूज इलेक्शन रेयरली रेस्पेक्ट वी कमांड बिकॉज देर पीपल सीयर्स As a very mature, sober country, a decent country, uh, a country which takes into account concerns of others also. ये हमारे छवि है वहाँ पे बहुत इज्जत है हमारी. लेकिन तो हाँ कर देंगे उनको कोई दिक्कत नहीं कई लोगों को कुछ कहेंगे लड़ाई करने से क्या फायदा इंडिया को नाराज करने से क्या फायदा बोल दो आप होना चाहिए कुछ बदले में ले लो और बोल दो और वहाँ ने वो नाम है रात में धैर्य नहीं तो दो तीन लोग तय करेंगे विच इज बेसिकली यूएस चाइना वो भी क्योंकि वो वीटो पे बिल्डिंग पावर मना कर देंगे तो बात खत्म होगी तो दैट इज द गेम तो ये कब बदलाव आएगा आई रेडी कैन नॉट से वन पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ दिस बदलाव कुड बी व्हेन दे रियलाइज दैट यूएन खत्म हो जाएगा सो जी ट्वेंटी पे हो सकता है सर पॉलिटिकल एजेंडा शिफ्ट नहीं जी ट्वेंटी में देखे ना जी ट्वेंटी में कौन है इटली इट डजेंट वॉन्ट एक्सपेंड बिकॉज एक्सपेंड को जर्मनी आएगा इटली को क्या मेरा बदले अर्जेंटीना क्यों आएगा ब्राजील को मिलेगी मिलेगी थी इंडोनेशिया क्यों हाँ करेगा मिलेगी तो इंडिया को मिलेगी तो पब्लिक नहीं कहेंगे सब बात लेकिन मन में जानता है ना पाकिस्तान क्यों हाँ करेगा मालूम हो तो मिलेगी तो इंडिया को मिलेगी पाकिस्तान तो मिलने वाली सर लेकिन धीरे धीरे अपने आप ही एजेंडा शिफ्ट नहीं हो रहा है सर कम्युनिकेट में देखिए ऐसा है सो इट ऑलरेडी इट्स ऑलरेडी शिफ्टिंग As I said, this is the formality of it, of decision-making security concept. Now the reality is, they all understand that till large countries are on board on major decisions, those decisions will not work. If you take it, you will not do the security council. Sit down, you will sit down. Whatever decision you take, if we are not with you, you will not do it. So, because the security council could not be reformed, or they don't want to do a formal they don't want to formally reform it okay to keep us out and keep us as like um, uh, second category citizens and not the big boys in the sitting on the those five boys ke ram nahi hai to wo decision alag bahar ho gaya security council ki and then they are taken to security council where they get approved to ab ye abhi 20 log le rahe hain perhaps on the political side you will find that 10 8 10 countries का ग्रुप बन जाएगा ठीक है ना कॉल इट जी टेन कॉल इट जी इलेवन जी ट्वेल्व जितने भी नंबर आएंगे उसमें वो कहेंगे बैठ के बाहर कर अब यूएन का जो होगा जब होगा बैठ के आपस में बात कर लेंगे अपन लोग यूएन में यूएन वो अभी भी इन रियलिटी तो होता ही है उस एक्सटेंड तक नहीं होता वो बढ़ेगा जैसे जैसे आपकी पोलिटिकल हेल्थ बढ़ेगी आपकी इकोनॉमी बढ़ेगी आपकी मसल बढ़ेगी वो झक मार के आपसे पूछेंगे आप बता दो आप, आपकी मदद चाहिए हमको बता दो कैसे करें आप इनफॉर्मली कंसल्ट करेंगे आपको बिकॉज देनो आपके बिना इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं आप जो भी चाहे ले लो इम्प्लीमेंट तो मेरी जरूरत पड़ेगी ना तो मैं साथ नहीं दूंगा तो नहीं कर पाओगे सो देन दो इनफॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर विल गेट क्रिएटेड डेट इज आउट जी सेवन गॉट क्रिएटेड डेट इज आउट जी ट्वेंटी गॉट क्रिएटेड क्योंकि दो सौ कंट्री में बैठ के बात के कोई समाधान नहीं निकले और अल्टीमेटली दुनिया की सिक्सटी सेवेंटी परसेंट इकोनॉमी तो बीस कंट्रीज है हम ही बैठ के आपस में बात कर लेते हैं समाधान ढूंढ लेते हैं वो इम्प्लीमेंट कर देंगे किसी को नहीं पसंद आएगा तो थोड़ा पूछ बरोड़ के इम्प्लीमेंट करवा देंगे और तो क्या बीस इकट्ठे हो जाएंगे तो करवा लेंगे उनसे सो द डिसीजन इज नॉट बीन टेकन बाई दिस ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज मे बी सिक्योरिटी साइड डिसीजन टेकन बाई टेन कंट्रीज जो परमानेंट फाइव है 
जर्मनी आ जाएगा जापान आ जाएगा इंडिया आ जाएगा ब्राजील आ जाएगा मे बी अफ्रीका से कोई ऐसा क्लियर कट एग्जाम्पल नहीं है ऑस्ट्रेलिया तो नहीं आएगा मुझे लगता नहीं है इतना इतना नहीं है पावर नहीं है उनको तो साइज है उनकी पावर तो आठ दस लोग बैठ के आपस में बात कर लेंगे और फिर वो सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल चल जाएगा अप्रूव हो जाएगा और तो क्या होगा दैट वुड बी स्टॉप गैप सॉल्यूशन टिल द फॉर्मल अरेंजमेंट्स आर पुट इन प्लेस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस आंसर सर थैंक यू सो मच ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर पेशेंस एंड थैंक यू सो मच सर i think uh, not only international relations sir your sessions are always a master class in governance as well and mm. candidates as well as us we are fortunate to have your guidance and uh, i think it's two and a half hours and you have much more energy to go i know but <laughs> uh, let's uh, uh, wrap this session now uh, we'll have international relation uh, lecture again once the interviews will also start so tomorrow's before, lecture before we conclude uh, to all of you who are giving interviews dekhiye do teen cheeze hum aapko raay denge general theek hai na be very cogent in your answers and be consistent ye zaruri wo dekho they are testing your consistency they are testing your intellectual integrity ki aapko koi belief hai wo belief hai to uska aadhar kya hai theek hai na aur humne kaha ke nahi aapne kaha nahi sahab apna to कैपिटल सिस्टम बेटर है सब मेहनत करे कमाए यू नो सरकार उकार सपोर्ट नहीं करे फिर बाद में कहा सरकार को कुछ नहीं किया हाँ सरकार को बहुत करना चाहिए कुछ नहीं कर रही है वो समझ जाता है कि आप जो है कोई क्लैरिटी नहीं है आपके दिमाग में सही क्या है गलत क्या है या आपका आपका अप्रोच क्या है दस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट योर एबिलिटी टू डिफेंड योर आंसर इज इम्पोर्टेंट रीजनेबली विद डेटा विद आर्ग्यूमेंट्स क्योंकि सही आंसर क्या है वो साठ साल में नहीं ढूंढ पाए तो आपसे थोड़ी उम्मीद कर रहे हैं कि आप बाईस साल का बच्चा के आंसर देखे जाएगा जो खुद वो चालीस साल नौकरी में ढूंढ नहीं पाए है ना समोदेम आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द मैच यू फाइंड आउट सेल्स इन ओके इकोनॉमी और इन गवर्नेंस एक्सेट्रा तो डोंट एक्सपेक्ट ट्वेंटी मिड ट्वेंटीज में बच्चा उसको सब सारा समाधान बता दे तो खुद चालीस साल तक ढूंढ नहीं पाए थे वो इस बात को जानते हैं वो बिल्कुल नहीं वो समझते हैं इस बात को What they expect from you is first honesty. और मेरी बहुत सिंसियर राय रहेगी आपको अगर सवाल का जवाब नहीं जानते मना कर दीजिए क्योंकि झूठ बोलने के चक्कर में तीन चार पांच मिनट चले जाएंगे और वैल्यूएबल टाइम इन इंटरव्यू एंड यू लीव इन देर माइंड समबडी क्या ये तो ठीक है झूठ बोलता है देखिए नहीं मालूम है नहीं मालूम है वो समझते हैं प्रेशर इन विच यू गो इन द इंटरव्यू रूम सराउंडेड बाई सिक्स सेवन पीपल whose collective experience of working is like 220 50 years aur yahan aapki bitti important nokri is stake pe hai they understand those pressures many of them have been through that pressure to wo aapse nahi ummeed karte sab sawalon ke jawab ho aur ho bhi to aap usko de payenge us par so they will help you come with answers but be consistent be clear don't waffle they put you on they will test your uh, your integrity of your thought by putting pressure on you and don't don't turn turtle theek hai till you made a mistake then say yes perhaps you have valid point but ye nahi ki kisi ne kaha ke are to sab capitalism hona chahiye bilkul ha wo system better hai kisi ne kaha nahi nahi free hona chahiye ha ha free hona chahiye garibo kya hoga they just understand ki aap khali hawa ka roop dekh ke jawab de rahe hain unko aise option nahi chahiye to apni aur apne ye apne man ki mastikta aur clarity aap hi la sakte hain हम लोग खाली आपको सुझाव दे सकते हैं आर्ग्यूमेंट दे सकते हैं दिशा बता सकते हैं बट यू टू सॉर्ट योर ओन माइंड आउट सो स्पेंड सम टाइम डूइंग दैट कि इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी आपका अप्रोच क्या है उसके आर्ग्यूमेंट क्या है उसके बाद दे ऑल अंडरस्टैंड यू गिवन द गुड आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड ऑफ द मैटर आई मै एग्री आई मे नॉट एग्री दैट ऑन पॉइंट यू हैव सर्टन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड यू बैक यूर सर्टन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बोथ विद फैक्ट एंड विद गुड आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड इफ नेसरी एंड इफ यू हैव गुड एग्जाम्पल्स दैट्स एट एंड सेकेंडली तो बेचैन नहीं हुई टेंशन मत लीजिए आराम से जाइए टेक डीप ब्रेथ आराम से बात कीजिए ट्रीट दम एज योर इक्वल्स बस वो जरूरी है आपका कॉन्फिडेंस देखेंगे वो कि प्रेशर में भी आप अपना कॉन्फिडेंस अपने आप पर रख सकते हैं रख सकते हैं एंड द कॉन्फिडेंस विल कम नॉट आउट ऑफ एग्रेशन बट आउट ऑफ हैविंग ए वेरी क्लियर माइंड 
based on a um, uh, uh, fair amount of data as said what you must find out why and how kahe hum aapko madad kar sakte hain and then there will be no problems foreign policy is very simple i have told you that national interest national interest ke do pehlu hain wo agar aapko samajh mein aa gaye to sare sawalon ke jawab usi se nikle kyunki aap bata you can justify na ki dekhi national interest sab hota hamara isliye main kar raha hu and second a larger picture kya hai wo aapko isliye bataya global context kya hai जो कुछ हो रहा है किसी क्यों हो रहा है क्योंकि नंबर वन और नंबर टू नंबर टू जो है नंबर वन को चैलेंज करता है ये हिस्ट्री में होता रहता है एवरी वन इन वाई एंड दस ए पीरियड ऑफ ग्रेट कंट्रूलेंस एंड एंड वेर कैलकुलेशन कैन गो रॉन्ग एंड मिस कैलकुलेशन कैन है चलिए ना थैंक यू वेरी मच विदिंग रिमार्क्स ना सुकृति ओवर टू यू फर्स्ट सर थैंक यू सो मच एंड इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू हैव यू संकल्प हैज uh you know ashirwad of people like you and uh, i think we can wrap the session up and i have so pdf we can share via email to send it to me your your pdf uh so you you're muted sir any log liye banaya hua hai to theek hai na so we'll have this session again and uh, thank you again so much sir thank you very much Ashish, all of sir. you for you for your patience with me and for hearing hearing me and uh, being present here and all the best to you for your results first and then for your interviews thank you bye 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 good night sir